7.45 for the next one? I think so, and I have a proposal for how to kill the time in between. Okay. Um, so you have two sets of minutes before you, the October minutes and the November minutes. Okay. And at both of those meetings, we talked about changes to the use table and the sign by law. And I want to continue that conversation later tonight. And since not everyone was at the meeting in November, I think it would be great if you would review those minutes now, refresh your memories, or catch up on what was discussed, and then that will help with everyone being on the same page okay. for our discussion later. Specifically on table of uses. So I, yeah, I think um, <coughs> I have some. We we have some goals tonight of where we, we kind of want to get with the table of uses. So that would be the section to commit most to memory as you review the minutes. If that's okay. So um, because the next item on the agenda wasn't um, uh, uh, scheduled till seven forty-five, we can't take it up until then. So. Um. <laughs> Bear with us. <clears throat> I have a question for you on the Doyons expansion. Mm -hmm. You see, they're trying to lease out the property, like the multi-tenant. I don't know the answer to that, but they are trying to rent it, rent the space out. But their site plan review is for a single use. If this a single use. Well, a single use on the first floor, and then there's an apartment upstairs. Right. That's right. It. So it looks like, are they trying to lease it and not, they're not going to use it for themselves, or are they trying to lease it as part of doing it as part of somebody I else? don't believe they're intending to use it for themselves anymore. Which goes into that table uses item where, you know, switching between, we change things, and if it changes between even groups, categories right now there's no site plan review required but that didn't used to be the, per the, the case it used to be if they changed a use well so if it does change it's between like categories now it could be triggered site plan review could be triggered through categories right it's not within not the same line, category yes. right but when you look at our existing table of uses the categories are very broad. So that's a perfect example. Right. But they could, right now their use is what? Well, whatever use <coughs> they want to, whoever the new tenant is, will need to check and make sure that it doesn't have some drastically larger parking requirement and that it can still, you know, function within the site. Yeah. But it might not trigger, an, it yeah, most likely won't trigger a formal review right. by this commission. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if they were trying to split it up into several things. I'm not aware of that, but I can check. Did you ever look at Somerville's table of uses? Yes, that was the 60-page one that yes. Andrew referred to last time. Okay. That's pretty interesting. They, they're very specific, even though between the specific uses, there isn't that much difference. Right. They're very specific. They're also revising all of their codes. Are they? They're recodifying it. I think they're doing some major revisions. I just don't know what they are. <laughs> and potentially a form-based code, at all. maybe. Actually, mm -hmm. they might be doing a form-based code for some areas as well. Just yeah, they've got a lot of sort of overlays and initiatives going on down there. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting. They were at very specific many very specific uses that didn't vary very much between them. Right. So, well, and allowed in different places. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, there are a lot all over the place, but <coughs> I guess you could call it a category, like office category. They have very specific types of offices. Yeah. I didn't think that there was an impact between some of them. It had to be that specific. But I guess I would want to know, like, what the point is. Does it trigger you or, like, what, you know? I was yeah. only doing sort of cursory look at it. Yeah. Time. It seems like too much. Guess me. Some are also totally different. That's very different. Animal and Redding. <laughs> <laughs>
page nine. Um, one, two, three, the third big paragraph right in the middle. You're talking about the October minutes. Sorry. For November minutes. Um, October 7th. Okay. So page nine, one, two, third, the big paragraph, third line. Right in the middle word, the first word in that line is gateway, Mr. Safina. Mm -hmm. Right below Mr. Safina it says, and lifestyle services are small laboratories. I definitely did not say lifestyle services. Life science. life science. Life science. of that sentence should probably be those types of uses are defined as, which is a horrible sentence, but it's definitely are. Or how those types of uses are defined. Sure. Top of page 10, Schaefer suggested probably refraining, not reframing. Mm October minutes. Yeah. Later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's All right. Uh, since it's 7:45, um, uh, our 7:45 agenda <coughs> is a public hearing, continued public hearing for special home occupation permit at 2123 Village Street. Is this really a continued hearing? Yeah, you or opened it. Didn't get to that discussion. Oh, all right. See why I don't remember it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
is someone from the um, the applicant here? Yes. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so you can sit. You don't. Have to. <laughs> um, so the way that I I read this is that you. Um, you have that there's a existing garage structure in the back. Should um, the applicant state his name and address for the record, sure. please? Ryan Barry, twenty one twenty three Village Street, Reading, Mass. Thank you. Um, you have a structure um, on your property in the back. It's a three or four car garage mm -hmm. um, with some space on the second floor. Um, and you want to use that um, as a um, as an office for your electrical Correct. business. All right. Um, and uh, as I understand, you're not planning any um, signs. Um, really, no modifications to the outside of the building or um, the outside repairs are just the dilapidated falling apart areas to rip, but no n nothing showing that the business there was okay. okay um and then is this the plan you're gonna for the for the upstairs portion yes so you you're you put a couple of walls in is yeah that, pretty much so a big storage area in the bathroom and the stairs that were on the far right side that are removed I'd move those to the inside of the structure because they're kind of not very safe right now. All right. <laughs> um, and then uh, tell us a little bit about sort of how your operation works, like who will be there and um, your vans, or I, I assume it's vans, but Van, you yeah. say that vans or trucks coming in and out and that sort of thing. Primarily it's a service business. Yeah. So our clients are the public. Yeah. So if the van does go there, I would be surprised if it was more than twice a week. And it would be during times, you know, between 8 and 4 p.m., which is one of what I work on hours. But my vans don't park at nighttime there. My guys have them. And the only one that works in the office is me and a part-time person just do, you know, bookkeeping, estimating. It's more of a storage for files yeah. and, and blueprints and place to put. I, I pay for a place now in Wakefield, not five minutes from here. So it's just, I think it was a good fit. So you're not using the garage part of this to... To garage storage, the, yeah, just sto electrical storage. Oh, to garage the vans. No, yeah. not the vans. Okay. Just okay. Bulk, bulk, bulk materials. Okay. Nothing we left outside. All right. All right. Other questions? Yeah, my only question mm -hmm. is that it, it looks like the right part of the garage is on a different property. Yes. The um, it's known as storage area A, on the other on the easement, which I have exclusive rights to, per the deed. That was made back in 2005, but it definitely is a known encroachment. And that outside stair is going away, and you're gonna. As a part of this job, I'd like to remove the outside stair more aesthetically than anything else, but it's also falling apart and doesn't hold in the water right now. So I'd like to have one permit for a roof repairs and the second floor, if possible. So I have, I really have no problem with the proposed use. I'm just curious if it's noticed properly, right? Because part of this is on a different address. Does that matter? He has an exclusive easement. I saw the, I saw the easement. Access. I know he has the right to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that Most of it is happening on, on the property, right? Yeah, right? Or is it which one? Which one is 17? 17 is to the left. Yeah. I okay. that address. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So does the storage area currently have running water or heat? Um, at one time, it definitely had a lot of things. It was a barn. It's a unique structure, to say the least. Mm -hmm. But no, right now, there's just temp there's electricity out there and nothing else. So 
to install the restroom, you would still have to run the sewer and the water lines. Right to the structure in front of it, the house. I've, I made provisions during the renovation to tie in if I got this granted. Okay. And your property is currently 2123. Is that a condo or is that an actual? It's two family house. Two family. Both, yeah, owned by me, yep. So you own both sides, you rent out one side then? Right now, both, but I will. It's a short-term lease. If, if this works out, I'm going to need at least a year to get my affairs in order financially and everything else to do the project. So she's aware of that. Okay. And how many employees do you currently have today? Four. Including the part-time bookkeeper? I'm not including her. No, my four field employees. She works with me part-time. So it's four field employees, yourself, and the part-time bookkeeper. Correct. And you do not foresee the field employees coming in in the morning, picking up equipment, and leaving? No, it goes ninety percent of our projects. It goes right to the job site. Where do they get their supplies? We have the vendors. We call it in, and the vendor delivers it to the job site itself. Yeah. Okay. If the job gets done quickly, we bring the overflow back to the shop for whatever reason. But it's not a, not a place they go every day. But they're doing that now, anyways. That level of traffic is happening now, right? There's an overflow. Yeah. Uh, only at my, at my rental property. That's you know we just pretty much not over there. We're not using that at all for anything because oh, okay. the structure is not in good enough condition to okay. utilize it that way yet. My concern is that this does not seem to me at this point the type of business that was designed to be a residential accessory. This is looking like it's an actual business being run out the back from a different building entirely. Um, not to say that that's not bad and actually not even desirable. I'm just trying to fit it in with the current special permit process. I understand. The, the office is for me to build primarily. That mm -hmm. I, I rent an office now that we spend yeah. time in, and I would like to be able to have a property that I own as opposed to rent the rental. That's primarily what I'm doing this for. Mm -hmm. um, my employees go right by they bring the vehicles to their homes and they go right to the, the job site so how much storage are you foreseeing at the facility i have a one car garage now that i just put you know i can't even tell you what's in there but just basic overflow supplies you know instead of throwing it in the trash we just kind of keep them extra cable and so forth. exactly if i buy something that needs to be for a job next month if i get a good price on it, i'll bring it over there and delivery would come in my vehicle or a small truck or whatever and while it doesn't show it on here, what is the main, is like four different ways to get out back, four different driveways. So I'm trying to figure out where, which driveway would be used most or exclusively. For on the right and left side, they have shared driveways. And but the amount that even when my employee works there, if she were to come and do billing, mm -hmm. she'd park in the street. If, it, if it, you know, It's very, very, not much parking going on, not, not much street activity mid-afternoon. Mid she usually goes around noon time. And um, so your your parking is it's easier for me to do this is over here as opposed to the 15, 17 which is over here. Exactly. This, it's all asphalt between the structure mm -hmm. to, the, to the, the rear deck. If you see the rear deck there, yeah. it's all asphalt there. A little bit of commotion during the construction, but with nothing there now, it's yeah. pretty easy to move around back there. Other questions? And um, that's it for now. All right. Bring to the bed. Questions from the public? Yeah. Questions, comments? Yeah. Uh, Please make sure to state your name and your address. And anyone um, that's here, make sure that you sign in before you leave. Uh, John Ferrer, 17 Village Street. Uh, my concerns in regards to this <coughs> is currently both sides are rented. He said he potentially could move in there. But even without him living there, the amount of traffic that's going on now is significant. I have a video of trying to get in and out of our driveway. It's difficult as it is. 
putting a bathroom <coughs> in the structure or any changes to that structure on 17 Village Street would then be brought over back to 17 Village Street. So he only has use of the storage. But anything that, if he changes the front of it, that piece of property goes back to 17 Village Street. So it's only the, the structure. So any changes in that should have our approval because that could affect our marketability of our property going forward. And if the use of the property is a business, there's four workers, not including the bookkeeper, four to eight, or eight to four, that's, that's a significant amount of time. And if they have to go to a job early in the morning, who says they're not gonna be there at 10 o'clock at night? to get supplies, then come back, and then leave when we have small children in the neighborhood who play out there. Yes. Is there any provisions for if he doesn't move in there? Then it's truly a, a business in itself. He has to live there. Yeah, the resident has to live in the uh, in the property. In one of the units. So, uh, so how does that work? So he, the permit won't be approved until he moved in there? Uh, I would say it's null and void if he doesn't live there. Uh, I mean, the intent of yeah. this is that it's a, it's a home occupation because you live right. there. And that's the way the code is written. Right. right? Um, that was the biggest concern when we read that first portion. And the owner applicant for this special permit must reside on the premises. And one other person, non-resident, can that's occupy the, the building the, on the inside. That's the bookkeeper, typically. So that's your other helper, if you will. But you can have incidental people visiting home occupation. They just can't do work there. So if you had a, I don't know, look at this, that would be, <coughs> that's a good example. I mean, this is a good example where the, they're unlikely to be doing their electrical work on the premises. Right. The other workers. Does that make sense? But if he holds a meeting there, if there's a bigger job that more people have to come in, we're just thinking about it, all scenarios. He's gonna present it as best case scenario for us. It could be on the weekends, it could be, at, depending on how busy his business gets, it could completely change the use of that. So if his business grows from four, four employees to maybe 10, we want his business to, to thrive, but we also want to protect our area. There's, there's, a, there's a couple things that we can do. Yeah. I mean, we can add conditions to try to mitigate some of these concerns, and we can also issue this special permit for a finite period of time and reevaluate it in a couple years and see if there have been significant complaints, issues, enforcement that's had to be taken. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you feel that you wanted to grant this. There can you bring up the site on uh, the Google Maps or something mm -hmm. so we can see what it looks like across? So there, are there any barriers between the properties? Just one big open lot across there. That's what I thought it was like. Yeah. So let's wrap it up. extensive from the repairs as well. It's been, it has been, I, I'll be the first to admit, there was a lot dumpster back there. There's a lot going on during the repairs of the, of the property. You can't really get back there with this. No, but you can go above it. I think that's behind be you. Right. So the green outline is around 2123. Mm -hmm. And which driveway belongs to 2123? They're both shared on the right and left side. So any of the three buildings could enter through any of the two driveways? Or is it three driveways? I haven't read it that clearly, but I know that the left side, I, I know they're both shared because I, I, just, I just recall this conversation that closed and I just don't remember the exact wording, so I apologize. Each unit has an easement for four feet, four feet on whatever side that is. So 17 and I believe 21 share that easement four feet, four feet. Which driveway do you use primarily? The one adjacent to the property. And to the right of your building on uh, 15, there's another driveway on that side as well? Correct. And that's a separate easement for our neighbors here. Right, so Shuli from a 17 village. Um, so um, so we are owner of the 15. On our right side, we have two units, both condo. So the one driveway is shared by three uh, families. 
we have six cars in total. Very busy uh, in the morning and also in the afternoon. Also, we have uh, four years old that potentially can run in the parking lot. Basically, we only have parking lot in the back uh, for kids to play. Uh, I just want to add uh, one point on the uh, off-street parking. There's only one direction one you can park, and usually that's occupied. Very busy during the day. And we've, also, and we've sent in complaints as far as overlapping where the uh, telephone pole is to where it's safe to park, overlapping our driveway entrance on 17 Village Street, and that's before that property was even purchased by uh, the owner. The prior owners, we had issues with that. I'm not sure I understand that. People parking on the street, on the street, hanging over the driveway. Correct. Because there's not enough room to really put more than maybe one car, two cars. If there's a truck there, yeah, it has to be cars. another smaller vehicle. Yeah. And uh, during the winter, I'm a uh, Yunzhou. I'm uh, also from the 15 Village Street, and I we have been living there for almost five years. And especially during the winter time, you know, the, when the snow comes in, there's no way to park on the street, you know. We need to clean the street, so we have concern. Because uh, we're kids very young, and uh, he always play, and uh, he will have kids soon. And the uh, other unit owner, there's no place for kids to play, only the back backyard. And it's a public area. Did you say 15 is two units? Uh, 15 to 17, well, it, we are a condo, so we, uh, he's 17, really, and we are 15. and 17. Right, yeah. and then there's the third unit using, let me see if I understand correctly, you said this is two units, yeah. and then the third unit here also, so these two units use this, and then this third unit also uses this, is that and what you're the saying? Other side. On the other side. side. Oh, on this side. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. there's three units using all that. <laughs> Driveways. This the is three one. units? That's two, the two units. units. Add yeah. our units and then three the units. units. Yeah. So that's six cars that six side cars, and yes. then a minimum on the other side. Yeah. How many bedroom units are these each? Three bedroom, three four bed bedroom? Three, three bedroom. Three bedroom. Three bedroom. Three bedroom. Three. So I mean potentially the residential units could have three cars each. Right, so doing the residential traffic alone is is just as dangerous as anything else. But these are different. Nine cars potentially sharing one and a half driveways. Uh, this is residential development. We don't usually get involved in how this stuff gets yeah. approved. So is it a is it a common condo association across all these units? No. It's not. Just easements to try and Okay. But there is a condo association for each individual for 15 to 17, right. which granted the easement rights to 2123 for that storage area A. Which is that sliver over it, and anything that's right. changed, improved, or otherwise then goes back to 7, 15, 17 Village Street. That's correct. Because the storage unit will no longer be there, or that portion. I'm fine, I'm fine with that. Wait, say that again? You're just talking about removing the stair that's shown projecting out right now, right? Yes. And then what happens? The easement... He wants the, the, he, the property to then go back to him, which aesthetically will look better anyways, but the yeah, property becomes the... portion of the easement perfectly, would go... Perfectly would, would understandable revert. and fine. Yes. And your plan is to stay... But you're not dem demoing the building, right? Just that, that stairs is, is dilapidated and rotted, falling apart, right. and not holding water. So the plan would be to put it, whether this permit gets approved or not, I still will have to repair the structure, make it weather tight. Right, but that northwest corner, that northwest wall of the building stays. Correct. Right. So that's on the other property. Yes, with the exclusive rights to it, yes. Yeah. So, so it's just this, just this the stair. Piece? That's Apparently. No, my concern is just anything to do with it and any traffic to go with it. So if he's open that up to potentially add more parking for his workers to be in there, I just want it to be known that if that piece gets chopped off, that doesn't mean it can be used for further parking. I have a copy of that easement. I read it earlier. I have it here if you want. Uh, 
other comments on this? Um, how do you, how does everybody plow their property back there? Everybody does their own? I'm only, it's my, my first six months I own the property, but I recently um, hired someone to come and plow and shovel the whole area of my area. And you take we, your... We do our own. And, I mean, the old plan shows like a garage on your property, I think. Correct. And that's, and that seems to be gone, right? Correct. You just park back there now? Yep. And we have a small area for... Um, Fire pit. For kids to park. Kids, yep. Where do your tenants park right now? Uh, in front of the garage. No oh, problem. Yeah. Not in it, because it's in bad shape. I have, a, I have a video of trying to get in and out of the driveway, if that's useful. The driveway? Just to show the what it's like on a normal basis. Does anybody park along the driveway? Like what's the difficulty in getting in and out? If there's another car on their side, yeah. so if you've got to back out, you've got to back out onto their side. And if there's other cars there, you can't go through. Technically, we're not supposed to be using the other side where the six cars that could potentially go in and out, so our easement's there. So that pretty potentially makes us go. Can you point to that? Sorry. Do you mind? Can you show us on the... Do you, do you mind? No, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be way easier. Yeah, I know yeah. that. Um, yeah. So if we park here, yeah. then we got to come back here yeah. and then go through, but that's not exactly easy when there's cars involved here. So potentially there's... So we've had it where cars are parked here, here, or like this. So you, you're trying to go through where exactly? Here. To there, okay. But backing up with all the cars is the it's challenge. Different. Correct. Okay. Depending on which way you have to go. Yeah, but I'm not swayed either way yet, so I'm just asking questions. Don't think I'm like leaning one way or trying to be, I'm just asking questions. You're making a three-point turn onto somebody else's property, and you're concerned about them making traffic on your property. You know, like this whole, this whole development should have been one thing potentially, and then it might have been dealt with better. I was thinking maybe if you put a fence up, mm -hmm. to some extent, you could limit traffic. You know, once you get off the driveway, you're limited to going one way or the other. But, but you're saying you need that space to make movements. Either way. Because even if we, we have to go on, because of the easement, we have to drive on his side anyway. Right. That's what I was trying to get at was. You know we're on this, right? But. So this has to be left clear so that, sorry, this has to be left clear so that the cars can come in and out. And at some point here, there shouldn't be traffic going across. Whether it's somebody backing out to make a turn, they should go like that. And this person should go like that. But that doesn't always, depending on how they're parked and what's going on on the other side, doesn't well, always make frankly, sense. frankly, what you're doing there is none of his business, and what, you're, what he's doing here is none of your business, because this is not a common condo association. It's a residential area. But he's the res this is a private property. This is a private property. If there were a fence here, if there were a fence here, and uh, I guess you could put a fence up here unless there's something that says you can't do that. You, can, you can cannot. It's not literally just a car, one car can go through that. You can, you can see the middle. Not all the way. Right here. Enough for a car to go past this way or a car to go past this way. What is preventing anyone from putting up a fence on their property line? There's no condo association that tells me that he can't do that. No, but the, from pr practical point, and for the people living there, and if you live, if you live there, then you would feel very difficult to to pass through the driveway. And uh, we are now talking about when he wants to uh, convert this to a business, so more people will come in. So we have that worst case scenario. 
So we, if everybody just, <coughs> but we just, uh, we have concerns. So we just, uh, now it's fine, but uh, we still can work out. But when the new people, when those strangers come in and the back every day, and then my neighbor and, uh, and us as an owner need to deal with those unexpected events. So that's our big concern. Mm -hmm. It might seem pretty big, a lot of space, but in reality, there's yeah. only one car. You can probably sh show that or see the video. <laughs> video. Literally, it's, it's only one car can can just go through that. Uh, yeah, no, that doesn't imply that that's two lanes. I'm implying that they're they're taking turns, but that the movement is allowed in the driveway, and then there's some barrier that prevents crossing over on the properties as a protection. I'm not sure where the video was taken, but I'm. I'm thinking it was during the time we had dumpsters and stuff in the yard and trucks working back there, which is no, it's very clear. Yeah, look, if I have a birthday party for a kid, I'm going to fill the car up. I'm going to fill the place up with cars, too. I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not leaning either way. I'm trying to think about all the potential traffic movement in the back here and how to, how to solve it, mitigate it, if it can be solved. And if it can't, um, you know, I, I still think it's funny that that you're all making movements onto each other's properties to make this work, right? There's this common requirement <laughs> across the properties. That's not, it would have been written into a condo association document right. somehow, you know, everyone had rights to it. But. So, um, so before, um, we're, uh, Right, I guess right now, or you know, six nine months ago, um, even a year ago, um, were all the people that lived in your building parking either on the street, one or two if they could fit in 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 front, and then parking. What I'm hearing is parking two or three cars back behind the building there. So at least. Four, four cars or something um, associated with that with that building. Maybe right. more. Right. Um, no one parking in the garage. As of right now, no. Because it's in disrepair. It because it's in disrepair. Yeah. Exactly. Or so. Well, I haven't offered it up because it has. It's just in a in a state that isn't usable. <laughs> right. Um, but part of your it, part of doing this is is going to rehab the entire. I would assume, right? Oh, the it's going to rehab the entire structure so that um, is is would then the garage be usable? Uh, oh, of course, yeah, absolutely. So the the, tar the tarping that's happening in front of the garage because the garage isn't usable could actually go inside the garage. I haven't presented them that the option yet. Each tenant only has one vehicle, but I. But when you, I guess when when you, when you move because you have to in order to make this work, mm -hmm. you'll then you then have a, a garage. Oh, of course, um, yeah, three. A usable garage. Um, I, I guess where I'm thinking about this is that um, you know investment in a property is never a bad thing. Uh, I shouldn't say that. It could be a bad thing in some cases, but typically it's not a bad thing. Um, and, and in this particular case, that investment in the structure in the back might actually result or, or minimize some of the impacts that are, that are happening now from the density of the development because you then have three, if not four, well, at least uh, three garage spaces that, you, that don't exist right now. Along with the storage potentially. Yeah. Is that the plan? It's I haven't a, developed the entire know. plan yet, but it is your there's, a thousand, there's a thousand square feet to use there that would be very nice to be able, even, even people living upstairs would could use some upstairs space. I'm, I'm just trying to yeah. well, make it a usable you space. Know, have you gone to the building inspector yet about how you're going to use this? Oh, yeah. I, that's, that's what brought me to this meeting. Okay. And they're okay with putting that stair inside, and you're going to use that central door that's underneath the, pro the little projection, right? That would be the entrance to the... Assuming this goes through, yes. Yeah, yeah no, of course. But, so there are three garages on the south side here, I guess. There's three, three bays here, there's one bay here. Yep. You're going to take this off. Yep. 
So potentially, if, if this land space goes back over to them mm -hmm. for use, right? there's actually a little more movement you know, ability on your side. If there's, say, a it looks like there's a garage door right there. Yeah, yeah. If this were the dead, if this were the storage one, and these were the dead ones, this really wouldn't see much traffic. Mm -hmm. Park and uh, that's the intention. So if there were a section of fence potentially here, that could <coughs> limit crossing over. <laughs> I hope it doesn't get to that because it would look terrible and definitely get hit by the plow. But where are you pushing the snow now? Uh, Where are you pushing your snow? The, um, the the shared driveway on the left side. I plow hers. The, uh, that one there, yep. I, we, we plow hers as well. And she let me put the, the snow next to the garage in exchange for the snow plowing. Anybody live here? Anybody here that lives here? You say then with three bedrooms, three bedrooms, and then I'm assuming he's got six, uh, three bedrooms, three bedrooms, so that could be potentially six cars plus his working vehicles with three garage spaces, three additional cars being out there at a minimum. He's not proposing to park his no vehicles be there. Well, we're going by the same t token as three bedrooms, three cars. If he's living in one, there's, and the other people live on the other one, could potentially have three cars and oh, then no, he, workers. Yeah, if this were all residential, I'm saying. Well, I don't know how it's split, but if this were all residential, there could be three cars, you know, in each of these. Right, so we're going to look at a worst case scenario, which is our point. Because once this is granted, we can't turn it back. Well, as, uh, That's not what she said, though. She said that it could, it could be granted for a period of time and evaluated during that time. And come back. And that's what we used to do in the town. We used to work for it. We were always granted for one year at first. And then if there were no complaints and no issues and things were functioning smoothly, then they would be granted for five. And then after five, they'd be granted you know, longer. Or and we do it for larger projects as well, commercial projects that have potential traffic that we can't quite figure out and we, we see how it works and then make them change something or do a study, you know, depending on what's happening. So we do look at impact and we sometimes go back to them and make them change something. And this is all residential areas, not a minimum, it's a commercial one. So since we are the owner of the residential houses and we hope to keep this area as is residential. Uh, so I have one question. Um, so you said uh, potentially it could be a one year, but then um, like a limited permit. What if uh, anything bad happened during that one year? Let's say my child is four years old. There's when he play in the background, nobody watching him, and all of a sudden this employee come in. It could be a temp contractor, right? It's according to my what happened during one year. Anything happened? Who's going to be responsible for that? Tragedy. I don't even go into a hypothetical, but I mean, yeah. well, in reality, like one year, since it happened in one year, he could run over. <laughs> don't say that. Pulling into the driveway, That's but like, I mean, dude, don't do the hypothetical like that. He just well, made a hypothetical. Yeah. Like that. He made that exact hypothetical. I mean, I don't want to be presented with that. I'm saying we're gonna, we're not gonna get into who's, you know, the danger of, of something like that. We're gonna think about it. Is it safe or not? But. You come up with a million hypotheticals that, that, that don't involve him at all. His well, we're just trying to give a perspective of people who've lived and I appreciate for, your, for, for I over appreciate three years in different, in different uh, ownership, in different people, so construction. Construction on the other side, because that other, we went through it with the other side, too. Yeah, and uh, when, when, when he said that uh, no impact, actually, when, when, he doing, when he was doing the construction and the other side is doing the construction, those dump trucks always cross out. It's um, a lot of uh, impact. So. Yeah, I just feel like I need to explain everything I'm thinking about, but I think I'm just going to stop doing that because construction is disruptive and anyone can tear down a house and build a house next yeah. to you. And, you know, that's 
a problem and the town does construction on roadways and that's disruptive and this is just a messy development that is ill thought of because it doesn't come up for, for site plan review. This yeah. is residential development. Yeah, and this is also not like a, uh, on the street. It's just a back the streets and we need to cross out the house and then go to the work site. This norm is unnormal. So if he has a business, you know, just on the street and the, the employer, employee just come in and out. But this is the, across the house and then go to another place to work. What's the address to the south? 21, is it 25, 27? No, I think it's in the 30s. That <laughs> person's not 31. here. 31, 33. Yeah. Someone yeah. <laughs> here from 31, 33? So there are eight units using three driveways with a interconnected backyard or back driveway parking area. Why, um, I'm just gonna start throwing stuff out here because, again, I'm not swayed either way that I'm just trying to find solutions. What if the decision only lets them use this driveway? Um, Just asking a question. Well, so he, my understanding is that he has easement rights to use I know. the other ones. I don't know that we can them. overrule that. I mean. Well, he's asking for a special permit to do something different on the property than what was potentially known when the easement was granted, right? It's like a special condition. Now he wants to use it for his business, and and there are. There's real safety concerns there, potentially. There's real other concerns you know, with the movement, but what happens if the business is only allowed to use it on the driveway? Um, I guess it's a, that would be a question of distinguishing between when he's driving his own personal vehicle and when he's doing his business, like especially if he's saying he's not having commercial vehicles on his property. I mean, I don't know that that gets us anywhere. A time limit. I can do a 30 minute time limit. They would be on the property. They would not be staying there for more than 20 minutes, you know, dropping off quickly. <coughs> so, are they actually coming to the property? Oh, this, oh there's, there's times that, of course, you have to drop off bulk materials at the end every of the day. Every day? Though? No, 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 no. Definitely not every day. Because I think that was one of the things that was. Um, I did not understand that from what was said earlier. Yeah. Every situation is different. Oh, yeah, it's okay. So. Several family members who are electricians, and I know how they use the vans that belong to the companies. Nobody wants to, everybody just wants to go home after the day, right? So if they can avoid going, making an extra trip to drop off something or pick it up, they'll do it some other time. So there's like, it, it's just free form, kind of like whatever is best fits in your schedule, kind of like for when you might yeah, stop by. If you're, you're, if you're a tradesman and you're working on site, which is what you do, right? You're going to install the plumbing or the electricity at the site. You're not going to do that. You're not going to pre-wire panels in the garage and then deliver them to the job site. So those workers tend to go home and then go to the job site. Or maybe they have to go to a, a supply house sometimes to pick up something if it's not delivered in bulk. Could right. in the same token they come and go whenever their job's done? So they could come on off hours? If they're just going to go home, isn't that the same thing? There, I'm not saying there won't be off-hour travel. Why would they go there though? Like if he's not working, why would he go there? Oh, we always go to the work when we need to pick some documents or we need to some work that we need to work there. So yeah, no, emplo so no, no employer a will be there. Early in the morning. <laughs> if he has a project early in the morning, he's like, you know what? That uh, supply store is not open. It's an emergency, I need to go in there. Or it's not an emergency, I'm working a side job that I want to do and make some extra money. He's got some supplies there, I'm going to go get them. So he's going to go off peak hours. Maybe. The night of snow blow there might be the same thing, though, at that at a crazy hour to, to snow blow snow on the same token. I mean, 
if it's not a business use, it could be residential. I could be there at a crazy hour doing something. Yeah, I, I guess where I, what I'm thinking about this is, is this use um, any more intensive than a, than a, um, than a residential use? Um, and, and I think the traffic that, my feeling is the traffic going in and out, um, the way that, that is described, knowing, knowing the type of business um, and how this would be operated, I don't think that there's that it would generate any more traffic than um, two teenagers living in the house that constantly tear tear in and out. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think inherent in 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 this that it's a more intensive um, or, or disruptive use than um, than than what could be what could be used as a, as a resident residential use. I'm, I'm thinking similarly. I think I keep thinking about this as coming in and saying, you know, someone who it's a one family to turn to a two family. Now there's three extra park cars that go there. It's a similar kind of, there's, uh, there's an impact of two houses with potentially six cars whether six cars are all residential or six cars include one electrician coming in and put, picking up his supplies, it doesn't, it seems about equal to me in the traffic and the what if scenarios. I think you brought it up, you know, you could have family who come over every weekend um, and, you know, park up and down the street because they always have Sunday dinner together. Yeah, that's something you can talk to people about. If someone's running a business out of a residential area, you can't control that. But we're building in some of those components. Of, you can talk to them about it. And there are people, and there are enforceable mechanisms to do so. It's not, you know, it's not set in stone, and there's aspects of this that we can look at. Right, like, so the special permit decision can include conditions that try to help regulate these concerns or mitigate these concerns and give um, town staff an enforcement capability if something is going awry at the property. John, can you, can you just show me on the site how you guys use your property for the kids and stuff? I can't tell what's hardscape. It looks like it's all hardscape to me. It looks like it's all paved. There green areas or play areas on that back, property there's uh where the concrete stops there's a there's a back area where there's um area to play so um, on the light yeah, colored that yeah, light yeah. colored section yeah. just show me how you're using it so because my issue right now is i'm trying to understand all the vehicle yeah. movements so a couple of things uh, <laughs> this in the back basically there's a full car side by side okay every day we you know between 15 17 so it's four cars fully occupied. Head in? How do you park? So go this way. Uh, so we go this way. Yeah. We just put okay. the heat facing that way. Right? Right. So we four cars side by side. There's yeah. no additional room. Sometimes I couldn't even make you know, my car make, make a three point turn. Um, None of them are in the garage? There's no, There's garage. no garage. Not anymore. So uh, the previous owner, they get rid of the garage here. This is all the, the cross door. Okay, yeah. Um, so depending on the day, you know, my, my son could be riding uh, his you know, accelerator like in the back. He might just go between the cars or it could, could be... They could go to the front yard. Yeah. But the, the, I think the point is you know, there's no space. There's only four cars. Okay? There's no additional space. And my neighbor has to go. Like, there's four cars here. They have to go all the way to get up. Uh, sometimes even I, I couldn't stay here for like a minute there's few cars you know coming in and out on the tra uh, on this uh, drive it's very busy traffic why is it busy there's six cars in total six residential cars six yeah six cars you know they could be <laughs> going to the grocery store or they couldn't be you know especially in the morning it's very busy yeah that one driveway is for three units no i understand but that was my point earlier when you know the traffic is being generated by the units as well this is just as much traffic from the residential as hers from the commercial my concern is uh, is there a way to mitigate some addition to, is there a way to put some additional safety into this completely unsafe setup for one two three four buildings without him even being there why is all that crushed stone um 
I guess that's the old foundation for the whatever was there before, right? You when just did the garage went right, all connected right across the old garage. Oh, okay. When did it come when down? When did it come down? I'm assuming 05 when the condo was built. It's probably in the same condition as my set of stairs. <coughs> just here. Yeah, this, this 05 seems to show it as demo. It's dashed. It's either dashed or it had been taken down. Yeah. So our point is, since the traffic is already so heavy and then suddenly add a commercial use, and then that's where add additional unexpected uh, traffic. Is slashes? And the uh, properties to the north of 15, they park facing north. Yeah. In the garage. Yeah, they, in the garage. Garage. they have a garage. Oh, that's yeah, what that is. Okay. And the two car garage. Yeah. And what do we know about the neighbor to the south of you? They have little kids too. No, not totally. Kids, we have pets. Each one of them, each unit has at least a kid or a pet in it. Even the unit they're currently rented at his. I shifted the image. Oh, my drawing doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I noticed in the uh, condo documents for 1517, there is a parking plan in place. Do you have one for your 2123? No, it's not a condo, so I have no, I don't have a use for that. But if I could make one if I, if that was something that you guys wanted me to do. I think that might be useful so we could actually see where the vehicles would be allowed to park. At least give people a certain level of confidence that they can make the turns or whatever they need to be able to make. So that the the um, the permit would say, no, you cannot park diagonally across or parallel to the back of the house. So you asked for specifically, John? Uh, specifically a parking plan so we'd know how many cars would be able to park and where they would be allowed. Well, I mean, you can fit four at 17 to 15. You can fit four across the front. Right. There's just barely enough room to make that, to back up on the spot, though. Um, 15, 17. Well, so could you actually, because the stairs would be gone, right? right? Mm -hmm. Could you fit two cars within that space between, I don't know how big that is, within, um, yeah, within... You can't because then the easement goes back to us, then you'd be parking on our driveway. Well, no, then you guys would have more space, right? I don't think that could pop up across the Yeah, yeah the other side is already. at least one more. Is, is, it, is it crushed stone underneath the stairs? That's not going to be enough room. It's, it's really maybe. You can, maybe you can just go to our place and take a look so you can have a better idea how the space is. It's just the near the downtown. We couldn't fit five five cars across. There's no way. No matter how we rear them. No. Yeah. But I guess without with, even without that, you have you you have um, once you rehab the garage, you have eight parking spots, one outside of every garage door, and then four within the garage. Correct. Um, yeah. which is, uh, mm -hmm. not sure you f can fit eight spots, eight cars back there now. No. Be, press, be surprised if you can fit more than four. 
I think right now my property, I could fit three cars easily on each side if they both drive in from the protective driveway. Um, I think our point is very clear. We, we have no problem of improving the neighborhood, you know, improve the structure, but we don't want this to be a commercial use. And, and the under deal is very, um, it's already defined, uh, defined just only for storage use. If for other purpose, it had to be approved by 15, 17 village first. Um, yes, there's two questions I have that do you want to ask? Go ahead. So it, it is your intention to reside on this property? Of course. Okay. And, um, you know, I am not entirely convinced that he doesn't need to get approval from the condo association to, to make modifications to that portion that's in the easement area. Yeah. So I would want some sort of you know, assurance that that's taken care of. Um, ah, repeat that again, I'm sorry. So I think that <clears throat> I would say, being a, an owner of a condo, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had exclusive use to a certain portion of my condo and I actually expanded into it and I did have to receive approval from my condo association to do that and it was within the walls of my own unit. I would be very surprised based on that one experience that I've had if you could do this on someone else's property without getting approval from the condo association. So, so that was brought up at the building department. The repairs in the, on the structure have nothing to do with the proposed use down the road. If I'm not going to be fixing this to be in my office, which is whatever happens with the outcome of this meeting, I still have to repair the structure and be in that exclusive area to do the repairs. I presented them with that request first. Right. Um, so I'm talking about the use and putting a bathroom into oh, a portion yeah. of that space yeah. that's actually on their property. I could then, I could shift it five, four feet or, or the whatever. stairs or really any... Yeah, I mean, anything that modifies the, the structure that's within their, you know. Even like, internally? An easement area, yeah. especially internally. Oh. I, yeah, I'm just reading these. It's unique. I'm not familiar with something, you know, exclusive rights. I mean, I only have one experience, so I, I can't really say, but I just, yeah, I don't know. And the easement is the exclusive right in the easement to use the storage area, known as storage area A. Yeah. Uh, provisions of the village condos trust and its bylaws. So we'd have to really dig deep into those bylaws. And you're saying that in your statement here, I, I read the documents that were provided, and I, 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 you know, I also am a trustee of the association on my property, and we, we review, we have to review and approve all modifications that the unit owners make. So, I just, I'd be surprised <coughs> if he could do this without some sort of approval from the condo association. What if he demoed? <coughs> up to the door to get it off of their property. You have to go all the Too way expensive. <laughs> yeah. It would be, be, be surveying, it would be restructurally, it would be just a whole different job. I had a similar but opposite I thought of that, which is also a ridiculous <laughs> thought, but I was if I have building to them a garage for all their cars. <laughs> well, but they could easily pave and park in that gravel area and then they'd have plenty of room. You could actually put two cars deep and you could put two cars shallow and it would make their traffic work easier. We're actually putting grass there next this summer. What is grass for? On the other side on the other side I have a question as well. Grass is nice too. If it's if I have to ask to utilize that interior space of their of the storage area A does that mean they have to be responsible for the repairs on storage area A? Because it's there. It's, I mean, it's you'd there. have to look into what your easement says. I mean, you need an attorney, really, I think, to like yeah, make that I'm assessment for you. I'm a real estate attorney. I'm a licensed uh, Massachusetts real estate attorney. So for the easement, actually, it's just a the right to use as the current deed states.
it's used as the storage area. It's not otherwise permitted. So if you want to use it as like a bathroom or change it, you need to get our approval. Why can't you flip your plan? I can't very easily. I'll put the I'll put the I'll put that anywhere. The bathroom, it's no problem. Yeah, I think you would probably have to just from the very basic understanding of yeah. what it says for your use, which is the storage use. You know, that would be your storage side. So, you know, you kind of move it as far. Um, yeah, it's wide open up there. I can put yeah. it anywhere. It's no problem. What's happening with ZBL? I'm sorry. I'm, I guess I thought he would have to go to ZBA. I thought I misread that earlier. It's not. He's just looking for a special permit through us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I really think, I, I guess there's two ways you could go if you're, there's three ways you could go. Continue it and think about it more. We'll talk about it again in January. Um, if you're happy with it, talk about conditions for approving it. And then I have a condition in here that it would be subject to approval by the condo association or some other proof that that's not needed. Um, or, um, you know, continue it and have him figure out these questions, the, these key questions, right? Is this use even allowed through the condo trust um, and the documents? Um, maybe it doesn't come back because maybe it's not. <laughs> There's no way that the condo association controls whether he can apply for a home occupation. Anybody can apply for a home occupation. Yes, and he's done it. He's applied. Right. But I think that's a... Condo Association can control what he uses that, that portion, portion for the piece. Right. I mean, I can't imagine it's much more than that. So maybe he can modify his plan. And, and the way it's inferred in there, although not stated, not exclusive, not specifically stated, because it's called a storage area, one would deduce that that's the intended use of that space. Although it doesn't say that, it doesn't say that anywhere, and you could you could argue. On, uh, either way, um, but if it remains a storage use, then uh, you're not modifying it, the use at all. There's there's nothing to approve. Right. So I mean, I just I'm trying not to like waste everyone's right. time. That's kind of right. Right. I don't know how we. Uh, I don't know how someone how you get, you get confirmation of of. Of a negative, you know, the condo association is not going to. Seems like. Say, oh yeah, you don't need anything. Right. Right. <coughs> um, Probably not. Yeah, you know, there's just there isn't really enough detail on this survey. This little block plan to show all the driveways and all. Of you know, building edges and traffic movements. And that's, that's really something I'd like to see a little more of. I would like to understand if there's a way to make, to limit the way the vehicles move to the property. We understand that the tenant, the tenants next door like to use the driveway on their side of the building, right? So you come in on the 15 side Typically, yeah, we, our easement's exclusive from that one side, so we, we're technically only supposed to use 17 side. They're only supposed to technically use 15 side. So right. part of our deed is that that side. But that makes each of your movements difficult, right? <coughs> you have to back up. You have to back up to make a turn. You have to back out of the driveway, or you have to make a, a three-point turn to get out, right? We're going to manage it today with today's traffic. 
but yeah, we'd have to back out, back out of the driveway. So wouldn't it just be easier if everyone came in on the you know north driveway and left on the south driveway? If you all did the same movement, because then you would back out of your space and you'd go forward out the south driveway, <coughs> come in from the north driveway. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Well, because then we're adding those other cars over there doing the same flow of tra traffic that we, it doesn't benefit them to go in and out of another driveway that's two driveways down from them or a driveway over from but them. Everybody's that's always, not theirs. Everybody's always going forward. It's less, less backwards movements, right? Those guys pull out of their driveway and they drive forward. Well, like they could leave that way. It's only three cars. Yeah. Three cars. I don't know. I've That's also kind of where I'm thinking is like, how is it that you can actually revert this to rationality with actual properties that don't have this huge shared um, parking lot in the back, and you know, start to create some more delineation other than those driveways? And I think that's where your thinking is going. Is there a way to actually, you know, start to bring this? massive back lot um, into a little bit more delineation and that does you know having one way go and en enter and the other way exit and similarly you know, this is enter and that is exit because our deeds has a restriction so our deeds only give each exclusive use you know for the your side driveway which means 15 Willis Street, using the driveway on the, okay. the our side. Yeah, but you're the and the 17th, you're using, no. But the deed, you can take a look at our deeds. So our deeds has that way. So basically, if we drive their ways, and we just uh, not authorized to do that. What's that? It's a lawyer screwing everything up. <laughs> <in> rational <laughs> planning. Um, yeah, I mean, you're making, you're making uh, three-point turns onto the other property sometimes, then. That's what your claim was, that in order to back out, sometimes the cars at 21 were blocking that movement, right? And when we have to, three, if, even if we three-point turn the other way and able to go back through, sometimes we have to cross over a little bit to be able to cut it that close. So if there's a car in the middle here, it's a lot difficult. If there's two cars in the middle and backing up that way, there's less room to go than the other way. Again, uh, I, if there's I, a residential, there's no one preventing. Someone yeah, from I'm gonna. I'm gonna there. suggest. I'm gonna suggest because because it's really you know the circulation is just is it, haywire here, um, and it's it's haywire whether it's um, whether it's residential or whether it's commercial, and so really it's it, the question isn't. You know, I mean, sure, it would be great if, if, if the circulation could be rationalized, but I think the question it really here is, um, is the intensity, is that use, adding that use, the, the home occupation, the home use in the, the um, garage, um, create um, uh, a, a heavier use of the, of the property? Um, and, and really, the only heavier use of the property that that I that we see here from from this is uh, parking and and <laughs> it always comes down to it is parking and um, and um, it, it cars coming cars coming in and out not necessarily safety cars coming cars coming in and out um, and so what I would uh, I guess where I'm thinking um, is that if uh, we don't quite fully understand sort of the existing use in terms of the amount of cars that um, that are there or could be there from a residential standpoint and then and then what kind of limitations y you might impose on yourself um, to sort of conf you know make sure that there are, that you aren't creating more um, traffic um, uh, into this into this space um, I, I could think of a, you know five, six, seven different ways that you might do that, but um, but I think it, it depends what works for you and for your business. So um, I think. Um, I th so so what you're saying, John, is <clears throat> if the base case is six cars, what might he propose for his business that is less than six, six residential cars? Not more than six. 
Yep. How they circulate and how they park. So six vehicles in the driveway. Period. As of right, you can have six cars parked in that driveway. Oh, that, that'll always be. So, so your analyzed. proposal would need to say. How are you going to accommodate well, those? Well, no, it's not say as of right. Yeah, yeah not as of right. Not yeah, right. No. no right to that. No. I He's actually think. So our standard parking requirement is 1.5 spaces per unit mm -hmm. and then but then there's also like a, a realistic situation in which you had with a three-bedroom unit like a married couple with two teenagers and maybe there's four cars in that family like so I, I just I don't know that you can really say that no we were just looking at the trend you know between all the units it looked like it was about yeah they, they only have I mean, four yeah. on one side family of four could move into one of the units and have four cars and so I just I think it's really tricky to so I don't really even know if that's that, that looks like it's drawn to scale but um. <coughs> shouldn't put grass on that whole thing they should pull the parking forward and just more space to make it easier. I guess I'd like to see some kind of a, a full site plan that showed all the driveways delineated and then the, tra the traffic plan, the parking plan, the storage plan. You're going to have to flip that, I would think, your use anyways, to comply with the easement requirements, at the very least. Yeah, the construction, the build-out can be, I mean, it's wide open. I can, put, I can do anything I want on that second floor. I'll make that a big closet. Yes. Just if I get the bathroom away from that storage area A on a drawing, Yeah, it's first and second floors they're calling storage area A, but it looks like it's only the portion of the building that's literally within the unit. Yes. So not, not so even the... So you can do whatever he wants with the portion of the, the building. The garage bay on the first floor yeah. can be used like a vehicle storage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of that would have been the stair anyways on the first floor. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. So beside the traffic, uh, we also have concern on safety. Uh, just because this is a business purpose, right? It's not a residential people come in. So for example, you want to uh, hire a couple of people plus contact. So as a business, you have turnover. So always stranger come in to our neighborhood. Um, we have a concern about anything besides the residential uh, person that can potentially damage I don't know, property or could cause... Like the FedEx driver. I mean, well, it, there's... That's different. The FedEx, <laughs> FedEx driver so is FedEx not driving different. in the back there. The FedEx, the, his well, workers are going to be back there walking around, taking a peek at our cars, taking a peek over here. I also have uh, someone uh, I can yeah, go to uh, for FedEx. Uh, really yeah. This yeah. is different. Uh, <laughs> You're going to hire someone that we don't know, that potential could... You, you never know. Is there any background check? Um, criminal background check or anything to control that uh, either contractor or employee we don't know we don't do that for residency yeah you, you don't you have no control over your exactly. your next door neighbors either but but that's uh, no, that's, yeah, that's the residential is different residential people in. live there at, at least the friends their family you know they know each other <coughs> they want to invite strangers maybe something they're not familiar you know, in our neighborhood, but this the whole area is the residential. Yeah. And the suddenly, a uh, commercial behind the several commercial buildings, and they need to cross all those our commer uh, residential buildings, and then this we are very concerned. If it's just on the street, What's maybe it's fine, but you have to cross all these uh, residential areas. <coughs> yeah, I. I, I hear your concern I think we've asked him for um, uh, to, to come back with some some um, material related to the parking and um, circulation we can um, see where that where that takes us okay. what is the blue 40 yeah 40 So, motion to continue. I'd like to. Do you think yeah. we should ask him when he thinks he could have that stuff ready? 
Well, more importantly than continuing this, I'm concerned about the property and the weather conditions that I've had to wait for to repair. Yeah. I need to get a permit to fix the roof, pull those stairs off because they're unsafe for anyone that goes up them. I would like to at least repair the structure without a build out. So if they could, if the neighbors could approve at least a repairing of. As well, I don't. Separate that's nice. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> repair that and use it as a vehicle garage and storage. That's by right. Yes. Yeah. Well, they okay. That's understandable. Okay. I, in the in the it's part of the storage area A. That's why I was asking because. <clears throat> I mean, that, that's the condo association. Yeah. It's not related to the. Yeah, it's not related, related yes. to the okay. special yeah. home occupation. If all he's doing is tearing down that stair, putting the stair inside, and repairing the structural and and siding damage, if you will, um, it seems to be. Do they have to approve that? He's not changing the I, use? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's, but it's not for you no. guys. To yeah, certainly not no, for us. Certainly not. Um, when do you think you'll be able to come back with the materials they've requested for the special home occupation? Which is the parking? A site yeah. plan showing the parking layout. Traffic flow. Traffic flow. Safety. And a clipped architectural. G GIS. Can you zoom in on the JS? <laughs> Can you turn off the zoning and zoom in on the, the three lots again? See how see how everything's kind of delineated here. You can see the paved areas and the edges of the edges of the buildings. That kind of plan that shows you know where the parking's going to be, where the vehicles are going to go, things like that. And then how you how you would propose to limit that impact? I'll do the best I can. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I could do it. As soon as your next meeting, I'm sure I don't really know what exactly I'm doing at this time, but I'm sure I can review it. Yeah. January 13th is the next meeting. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, Eight fifteen is available. Make a motion to continue. Yeah, I was just looking for the first one. Nine twenty three Village Street. For that. 2123 Village Street. Uh, move to continue the uh, special home occupation, special permit application for 2123 Village Street to January 13th, would you say 830? 815. 815, yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. They won't notice that one again. So it's on January 13th. You so probably received this one. So you can make it correct. Yeah, I will try. <laughs> um, with the, um, with the, really with the other. We really should have included the 17th yeah. Village Street in the ad. So we probably yeah. won't. We will re-advertise it. The date? 113. Just to make it square. Same time. 830. 815. They actually will re-notice it. Yeah. Still good to go below? Yeah, yeah. I'm right. just uh, I'm not the solid as well. You shouldn't have to design it. Um, can next item on our agenda is um, a agenda marker. continued public hearing um, for site plan review. No, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, for a definitive subdivision plan of 135, 139, 149 R Howard Street. Thank you, Tony. Good. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, commission. I'm uh, Andy Street, civil design consultants at 30 River Street, Methuen. Here on behalf of the applicant, um, Infrastructure Holdings LLC, who's represented by Kevin Greenwood. Um, just kind of, I, I have a brief overview of where we're at and what we've done. Um, I just want to say that there's zero expectation of any sort of action tonight. Um, this is uh, this is the first revision to this 
plan set. We were here in February, so it's been 10 months or so since we've been here with any sort of uh, plan or update or anything like that. Um, we recently submitted new information and um, really here just to kind of give an overview of uh, what's changed in particular to what pertains to this commission and then you know, we'll hopefully get some feedback. We're working through a DRT next next week, 18th uh, DRT and looking for feedback from <coughs> things like that but want to just get the ball rolling and uh, start things up again with this commission. So um, just a quick quick overview of the parcel itself. This is 135, 139, and 149 R. Howard. We're in the single family um, 15 zone district. Uh, so I mentioned we were here in February. We were at ConCon before that. Since then, we've had we, we've really uh, the the time lapse has been because we've been working through conservation. Uh, we've had a couple site walks with them. Um, we've recently we were there in October and November. Uh, uh, and what's come out of that is we've we've come to an agreement on a wetland delineation and use that delineation to update the plans that are before you uh, tonight. Um, conservation has this same set of plans and we're still working through with them but we've gotten pretty far in the review process with them and their review consultant. So the parcel itself is about four acres, uh, 110 feet of frontage on Howard Street. There's two existing houses uh, down on Howard Street today with the rest of the site being um, either kind of grass behind the houses and then uh, largely uh, wooded um, uh, throughout the rest. There's a wetland system. Andrew, could you s can we see the top of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a wetland, a bordering vegetated wetland in this area here, and then we have another pocket of wetlands here. Um, so the, the neighborhood, of course, is, is single family residents all the way around. You know, it's relatively uh, dense along the north and the west there, and then some more houses over on the east on this side. The, uh, so our proposal, we were here. February we had about 350 feet of road and six lots and today we have 350 feet of road and six lots. The geometry of the uh, the roadway, the, the right of way and the lots is the same as what it was before. Um, so these are six uh, compliant lots um, and you know we have some waivers mixed in here that we can I'll talk about but this is the same configuration. It's the same pavement width, it's the same cul-de-sac head, it's the same um, property lines as, as was here in February. Um, we've got a 60 foot radius on that cul-de-sac with 45 feet paved and a 24 foot wide roadway. Uh, all the driveways come off of that roadway, None, even though there's two houses up on Howard, uh, those will tie in to the, to the new roadway that will <coughs> serve the, the whole, de whole development. Uh, there'll be vertical granite curb, uh, trees along here, um, certainly working with the tree warden on those. Um, we've got adequate sight distance and, and relatively minimal traffic impact here. We're really only increasing density by four single family homes when you consider the two two homes that exist uh, exist today. So from from a you know big picture changes perspective, um, I mentioned the roadway uh, geometry is still the same. The, the grade on the roadway, some of the feedback we got, a lot of the feedback we've gotten so far is about drainage and stormwater, both from engineering, uh, the town's engineer, and also during the conservation process. Um, what we've done to kind of work with that is, there used to be a pond, a, an infiltration basin in the rear of this lot here, and the house was up in front here. Um, we've got some concerns and some, some feedback from both abutters and from the commission conservation that this pond was really close to property lines. There was concerns about runoff uh, exiting the pond or, or uh, infiltrating in and exacerbating flooding concerns uh, in the neighborhood. We've also identified another, this pocket of wetland here was not on the original deline delineation. So we've added that and now basically we've kind of flip-flopped. The house on lot four is now towards the back and this infiltration basin is towards the front. Um, again, the lot itself, the size and, and all that is the same, but we've flip-flopped that configuration. To get water to this pond, uh, when it was in the rear, we had a break in the curb and then the swale that kind of led to the pond itself. That wasn't the preferred configuration from the uh, DPW, so we have now have a, a catch basin here, uh, and it's piped into this pond before it generally outlets towards the middle of the site and into that um, into that infiltration, into the uh, wetland, I should say, 
uh, to the north. Uh, the, the road itself is, is uh, it's got the typical cross-section until you get to about the cul-de-sac head where it really slopes from, from left down to right. So it's kind of super elevated, I guess. And the reason we did that was to kind of minimize fill here, keep things as low as we can. Um, and it's one catch basin here on this side. But other than that, it's uh, compliant there. We also have an infiltration basin down. If you could scroll down just a little bit, that'd be great. An infiltration basin is down in here that will catch runoff from this property and, and from this moving down to here. It's, it's really more of a, um, a defined low area that will catch runoff and then that gets piped back to the wetland as well. So before that was, uh, there's a channel there today that basically does what we're showing. It catches this water and puts it back there and we're just proposing to, to hard pipe it um, back to there. Utilities wise, the, the, um, everything connects to Howard Street. Water, sewer, gas, it all connects in Howard Street. Uh, the water will essentially run down the, the center of the roadway and tie in. Um, from a sewer perspective, these two lots, it, it's the same configuration as before, but as a refresh, we've got these two lots will be gravity fed. These four in the back will need, uh, need to pump up to a manhole that's somewhere in this vicinity here before going gravity into the street. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, and the roofs, one of the other stormwater tweaks is the roofs will now be infiltrated into the ground. So we're trying to minimize the amount of runoff that's making its way to the road and into the drain system and into wetlands and abutters and, and things like that. So we've rerun this analysis. Um, we've gotten a letter back from conservation's reviewer, not from DPW yet, but they seemed pretty well satisfied with our drainage model here. We've looked at peak flows and, and volumes that are going to, to the wetland to off-site and then also to Howard Street and we're either at or, at or lower than, than what it does today. Um, I think that's, yeah, and, you know, we, we got comments from, from planning office, fire department, and DPW last time. This was a long time ago with a little different layout, but we've taken steps to kind of address all those and we hope to kind of continue that discussion at the DRT that's, that's coming up. Um, I, I guess lastly, just to kind of run through the waivers we're talking about, uh, some of these are related to discussions we've had either with this board or with planning staff, um, and some of them are, you know, there's a variety of reasons we have these waivers, but um, one is a limited traffic study. We feel like the impacts here are pretty minimal in the scheme of things. We're talking about four houses and a full, full blown traffic impact study is, is not necessary. Uh, the right of way width is shrinking from the required 60 to 50. Uh, we did submit a proof plan as part of your package that shows we can do it the other way. It, it seemed to be the preference of the town to have that smaller right of way, a little less area to own and maintain and, and things like that. Uh, similarly, the pavement width from 30 to 24, again, through discussions with the town, that's, that's just less pavement to own, maintain, plow, all that sort of thing. There's no sidewalks around this, uh, which is consistent with Howard Street. Uh, as a whole anyway, if we had sidewalks, they were just dead end once you hit Howard. The landscape cul-de-sac island is not provided. Again, that's a DPW uh, request was to not have that. They didn't like that when they're um, trying to plow this. Um, they need something else to maintain. We're not looping the water main because there's no really no viable option to do that. Um, we need to have those force mains I mentioned. Um, we're not proposing street lighting consistent with portions of Howard Street as you as you work your way down. Um, and then there's some drainage related ones with, with cover over this pipe that doesn't meet town reg, but does meet um, manufacturer guidelines. Um, and then the type of the pipe as well. I think that hits them all. Yeah, so I think that's all of our waivers. So again, I'm, I'm trying to keep this brief because I know this isn't, you know, you, this board hasn't had a ton of time with the plans and the revisions here, but. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I just wanted to kind of give that high level and then hopefully we can get some feedback here to kind of move forward and then we'll keep working with um, the, the reviewers as well as, as this goes along. So, thank you. Questions, comments from the board? Your uh, force main pipe inverts will work on lots two and three with that, those uh, drainage pipe crossings? I'm sorry, say that one more time. So you're gonna pump from lot two and three. Yeah. Are you going to pump the sewer, the septic out? So these will get pumped down to a manhole here, yeah. You've got the the inverts work, the pipe elevations work with the 
that T-shaped, uh, well, that, that pipe there is this, this drain pipe here. Yeah, yep, and I can, that would be, yes, it will, it is the answer. And we can certainly highlight, highlight that in greater detail. I think we can call that out specifically. It's really only this <laughs> unit which will cross it. This one comes around <coughs> down below it. So we just really have the one crossing there. But no, it's a, it's a small, it's a two inch, well, it's a, I don't think it's even that big, one inch, two inch force main is what we're calling out. So we have a lot of flexibility with that pipe to, to get that. I'm sorry, that's the waistline? For that house, Two yes. inch? Yeah. Are we grinding it first or something? Two inch. Well, I haven't fully developed how this works, but yeah, it's just a small pipe that for each unit that's going to come down to a manhole, manhole there, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's... We'll probably put a grinder pump in or something like that, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's yeah, crazy. four inch line coming out of the second floor, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that seems small. Uh, I mean, we'll certainly, you know, we'll confirm it, but typically the, for a house, you know, that's what we've, we've, we've done. Yes. Use an E1 system or something like that to grind it up and pump it out. So, <clears throat> I think when you were here before, mm -hmm. um, we talked about how you know you not only were going to kind of mitigate the impacts of the construction, but you know was there an opportunity here to mitigate some of the overall drainage issues of this neighborhood? Yeah. I think you kind of mentioned that, but can you spell out if you've had a chance to? You know, if this plan actually does help with some of the overall drainage in this area. Yeah, so we, you know, I did mention briefly, but we looked at three areas where water goes today, which is this wetland here, off site over here, and then down to Howard Street. So we analyzed those all specifically, um, where the, how the water is performing today and how it would perform after this, um, and we're either uh, meeting or reducing both from a peak flow, so the highest amount during that storm, and also a volume perspective, the amount of water that's going there. I think this design, too, with the configuration of this pond is a better situation than with the pond back there. This pond here, it was you know, really right up against the property line and was discharging kind of more to the, you know, the left, you know, left direction, almost towards those residents as well. And now with this pond here, um, we've got the over the outlet pipe here going really towards the middle of this site as opposed to anywhere directly towards an abutter with an emergency overflow here that um, really kind of heads into another wetland that exists. So I think those factors help. I also think infiltrating the roof runoff will help um, because that just discounts that water from ever even, you know, before the idea was it was going to come down the driveway or come over land into the road, into the system. Um, and now that water is really taken out of the equation. So I think all of those all of those factors will certainly help with this situation. Um, but we have definitely taken care to, to look at all these areas to make sure we're we're certainly not making it worse than um, than it is today. And on the not making it worse, is that why there's um, additional infiltration basins that are proposed in the roadway? Uh, right of way along Howard Street. Oh, yeah, so I didn't I think you even touched on this. Yeah, so if you scroll down, so we had, there's a small portion of the road to here that uh, just to meet town regs will slope down towards Howard. So we, in order to kind of capture that and deal with it as opposed to just sheeting onto Howard Street, the idea is that it will go into these small little, you know, just be kind of a grass infiltration basin. There's a detail in the set. Um, that will capture that runoff and then pipe it into the town system here. So, you know, that's, we're talking about a very small area, you know, it's 100, 100 feet or so, something like that. Um, but that runoff will be captured with the intent of trying to get it into the ground as much as possible as opposed to just right onto Howard Street. Okay. I have another question about the property in the back in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, did, has the fire chief looked at that one and he can get the fire truck down there? I do not have any feedback from, from fire at this point. Okay. Uh, but certainly I could see why that would be a discussion point. So we'll be sure. To t I imagine it'll be at the DRT. I think they typically attend. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's be a good discussion point. How long is that driveway? Oh, that's a good question. I knew that was next. <laughs> I knew, I knew <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to. I can see if I can get to your rough. Because okay. rough I think that will come up. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I 
thing. So this lot line is 220 feet or so. So yeah, I think somebody said 180, you're probably in that range, 150 to 180 feet, something like that. So um, I guess I was surprised by the comment you made that um, about the reduction in the actual roadway right of way. Mm -hmm. um, right, it's typically 60 feet. We we typically ask for less pavement, which you know people you know come <laughs> like to, to go along with that. Upset, um, yeah. You know, 24 seems seems like the right thing for something like this. But I, I don't think that I recall that we ever had actually less right of way, a narrower right of way. You said you've reduced it from 60 down to 50, and I guess I just, I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, so where did that, where did that come from? Is there someone suggesting that we sh that you should do that? Because I don't see it in your notes here either. Okay, I would have to, um, so we, I, I, I'm not sure which letter, we do have a waiver letter, a, se a second letter um, that talks about oh. all those things. Um, I would have to check my notes right. at this point to see where right. that came from, but I, I do remember it coming up through some level of discussion. And again, I mean, this we can it works with 60 feet. Mm -hmm. um, you have more, I'm assuming you did it so you'd have more room to work with on the actual lots. Yeah, I think they're just better lots that way. I think it's a better, um, a better product, I think, but um, you know, it. it yeah, I just don't think we've ever had that discussion. Um, uh, we've had the discussion about um, about reducing the pavement width, but I've, I don't think we've ever had the discussion about whether the town actually wants less right of way. If there is some reason in the future, like we need to put in sidewalks because you need them for scooters or what I don't know. Uh, who knows? <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I just we we've never. I don't. I don't ever recall it's having that conversation. Now, right? Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. <laughs> UAS is a UAS line drone. I, I would have to look into it. I, I have recollections right. of this conversation at some point, but uh, we can see what we can do. Sure. <coughs> Does she have to say? <laughs> <laughs> you need to devote on anything? You want to vote on? <laughs> I, we always want Rachel's opinion on yeah, yeah. design guidelines and zoning. I feel bad that she's sick. I don't know if I can stick. We'll see. So. No other comments from the board? No. no. We want to open it up. Is there anyone from the public that has a comment? I'll start. I'm Suzanne Algieri, 149. Um, so just getting back to your comment about the width, um, yeah. dropping from 60 to 50. I do remember on a prior um, site plan, the uh, I believe the fire department weighed in and had some concerns on that width and whether or not emergency vehicles could access that area. So I don't know if that's part of the consideration with us. So fun, that. Yeah. The, so the fire department, I have the memo. There's a memo. So the fire department um, raised questions about. Parking is really more of what it related to, um, because if it's 20, I think it was more, it was less the right of way, but more the pavement, what the actual, so when we talk right of way, we're talking about the property lines, okay. and when we're talking, I think the fire department is more concerned about the pavement lines, because at 24 feet, if parking's allowed, then, you know, you could have a car on this side, and now a fire truck just can't get through, or something like that, and same with the cul-de-sac, this is kind of the minimum, um, or maximum, it's, it's the smallest it can be, and allow the fire truck to turn around. And so, same issue is that there's parking that um, that could hinder the ability of the fire truck to swing all the way around that cul-de-sac. Um, I think we're kind of open to, yeah. to either way. You know, this is a town road, so it, or if, it, if the intent is that it be a town road, so whether parking's allowed or not is, um, you know, I, we're open to. I think we're open to any discussion here. So. I do recall, or maybe I recall, maybe you, you all can help me out, um, I, in another subdivision, that same sort of issue coming up about the uh, about keeping the actual pavement width reduced, but making sure that the shoulders um, are built with enough um, sub-ballast, sub 
infrastructure um, right, to, support. To, to, to be able to support a fire truck if it mm -hmm. you know if it does need to go out around a parked car so it okay. can go off this and, and not having curbs um, mm -hmm. and such I do I don't remember that I remember them talking about having some mm -hmm. roadway with uh, to support the outriggers that they do have mm -hmm. to set up yeah, that was what yeah. we can provide yeah. examples of all of these different things yeah. here. Yeah. They, they, yeah, we've done different things at different times. Um, no way in at the DRT, right? Yes. Yep. All right. So, uh, so we haven't. Yeah, staff haven't reviewed the new plans yet, so yeah. we don't have a lot of real feedback. <coughs> again. So we this board is always interested in trying to keep the the pavement width down, um, but for emergency. Um, services they're interested in keeping it it open whether it be pavement or something else um, and so there's there's uh, often a, a, a balancing act that we ask um, for you know making sure I mean it, part of it may be that you don't get trees right up next to the next to the roadway um, which is think, too bad but I, mean, I think we could expect that cars will park on that cul-de-sac if they're visiting you know, people that are living in those homes. So mm -hmm. I think we just want to make sure that whatever it is, we've created enough space for emergency vehicles to get through. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Chuck Castelluccio, 62 West Cork Road. There's uh, like two or three pages of operations and maintenance for these infiltration basins that they're putting in. And the town is going to be responsible for that. And it involves dollars and it involves uh, time. You know, I think we, we want to feel comfortable and the town feels comfortable with, with doing the amount of work that's necessary to maintain these so that we don't get flooded out. Um, uh, we don't have those, you know, all the details of that right here, but I, th that's, that's very common. Um, in every development that has been approved in the town is um, the uh, town engineers um, review that and are, are comfort you typically make sure that they're comfortable with that so um, it, that is part of what gets reviewed absolutely <coughs> other questions comments um, I recall bonus 56 was scrubbed you mentioned that in your development you were raising the height of the property in one section. So some fill will be required in order to construct the road in these lots. We've got the groundwater is very high. So in order to build this appropriately, there is some fill necessary. So how high will it be? Well, I think that, you know, not just, I'm not dodging, but it's not, it kind of depends on where you are, but by the time you get to the edge of the property, you're back down to, to the existing, what the grade is today. Because I know on Randall Road, they had a fiasco with that property, the new houses they built there, bringing the fill in and the, the houses lower, were just, uh, they had to put in three pumps. Yeah, the so, so that, I wouldn't want that to happen to the houses around us, right. you know, because the property was raised too high. So part of what the design includes are considerations for that very concern to make sure that if it is higher and it's next to a neighbor, um, it, the water will flow around the house and go elsewhere, not off the property. Guaranteed. <laughs> That's what this design is for. <laughs> I'm not building it first. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Can't laugh. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Where that's going to be built up, will there be retaining walls or something to hold that earth back? Uh, we have we have I no walls for that one right yeah. there. Looks like it'll be up about six feet. Isn't sorry, each of those little bars a foot over the the one up? One more. This? Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. Each each line is a foot. Yes. Right. right. So that would be up six feet. What's going to stop that earth from sliding? It, it'll be. Minus uh, two feet. Is there a retaining <laughs> wall? Or there's not. No. Okay. Each no, line is two feet. Each no, line is are, two feet. No. It's two foot. a one foot yeah, on foot. on the plan. It says one foot for each bar. Yeah, 64, 65, 63. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you would take care of that in some way to pull that earth back. 
so that yes. we don't have a washout. Right. So there's not retaining walls. Okay. Um, the fill would be stable and okay. compacted. Um, grass actually, vegetation of some kind, well, maybe fully landscaped. And, yes, and, maybe some sort of alderberry or something that's going to hold that earth back that would be growing there anyway. I th certainly think that's a consideration. I mean, these will be private homes too. You know, they, okay. You know, this this one in particular has some conservation considerations and yes. things like that too. Yes. Um, uh, you know, for steeper slopes, there's there's mesh that can be put down to help stabilize okay. and promote. All right, so you have yeah. taken that into account. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Can we just have your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry, Janice Hart, okay. 70 Westcroft. I'm behind that wetland area. That's why I'm concerned. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I'm at 149 Howard. Can you explain that again, just for the? Um, I didn't. I didn't catch that, that you have to elevate that house so much and level, is it lot two? This is three, three this is two, and this is you. Okay. No. So I'm, yeah. So if you go to, to lot two, so you're raising <coughs> that up how high? So right at your house, yeah. right at this corner, yeah. you can see your house down here a little bit, right? Yeah. This is at elevation 162.4, right? I just, there's a number. Yeah. This house, the garage is at 168.5, so that is six feet higher at the garage right there. So this water will come down and we've designed this to, the water this is a swale, so it's a right. depression that will collect the water and round to this, this is that pond I was talking about mm -hmm. that'll collect it and pipe it back to the wetland. That's how we've that's designed it. That's enough to keep it from flowing back to my house? Yes, correct, yeah. Yeah, so the, you know, the water from your house is coming down this way and this is coming down this way, so we're trying to, um, it's, this continues, this will come down, it'll come down and around, and then this will go down to the, to the, uh, to the roadway. I feel like with all of this, sometimes it's like a different language. <laughs> so it is. It's like trying to understand it all, um, which I guess that, that helps a little bit. Uh, but just what amazes me is that you do have to elevate that, but yet it's not a wetland. And I know that was tested with the soils and all of that, but it just still is perplexing to me. But. So that, that, that's really our challenge here. Is yeah. It's really just two, three feet to the groundwater. So that means everything needs to come up because we have to have certain separations. Yeah. Separations between. Yeah. From Pauline Master, 144 Howard Street. So the cul-de-sac, is that going to be elevated? And is that road coming down to Howard Street kind of slope down? Or will it be flat the way it is? Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I keep answering that question. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Is that all right if yes, I answer it? Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the road will, um, it, it comes up slightly from Howard, because that's part of the requirements for the town. So a portion of it, a small portion of it slopes down to Howard Street. The rest of it goes towards the back and then into this, this drainage pond here. So the road itself is higher. We are where are we? This is, it's several feet higher back here than it is today. Yes, and then it drops off, the slopes down off the back and then toward, goes towards the wetland. So all the water from the rooftops is going to go underground or onto the driveways? Like where's the water from the roofs? So each house has a, it will have some system underground, usually some chambers or some, they're just plastic voids really there's chambers in the ground cisterns probably a good word where the roof will runoff will be collected and put in that to allow it to go into the ground instead of going down the driveway into the roadway and then into the drain system and what happens when the ground water is so saturated that it can't absorb that water well so these systems will be you know we have the information we have from the soil testing we did and the systems are designed to maintain a certain distance from where we've measured groundwater so we're not expecting the groundwater to get that high based on the soil evaluation we've done. So it's, there should always be an availability there for water to get into the ground. In the worst case, worst case is there's you know there's a, a backflow in the gutter system and it would wind up in the road. It's, the way it's designed so there's always a separation from the bottom of that system to the groundwater and its highest will be. And there will be additional drains at the very end of that road because right now it, yeah, it's very wet. Right. So there's, so there's one. Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two. This will come down and go into these two kind of smaller depression basin type areas. 
that will collect and infiltrate what it can, and then there'll be a pipe. What we're proposing is to have a pipe that will connect into the drainage structure that's in Howard Street. So even if it fills up, town drainage. Correct. So okay. even if it fills up, it's not going to go into the street before it goes into the town drainage. It's going to go directly into the town drainage and be piped, piped elsewhere. So can you estimate, or maybe you can tell, um, how far? I don't know what direction that is. How far up the the cul-de-sac will drain towards um, Howard Street? Yes. Bear with me for one second. So we come up for my small plans here. Um, the high point is it's about 65 feet from the road. It goes up. This is about 65 feet of the road goes to Howard Street, and the rest goes back. The third tree. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, hold on a sec. It's probably a little more than that. I think it's, I'm looking at my, there's a curve oh. right there. So oh, it's okay. more than that. I'm sorry. You've got right. in station. It's probably closer to. 65. Right closer to 100, I guess. 80 to 100, something like that. Just trying to yeah. the scale. So, but before the, uh, maybe the, where that driveway, where those two driveways are, or. <laughs> two driveways uh, here. no I was saying the new driveways oh new driveways. yeah I'm sorry yeah yeah maybe maybe from from that towards Howard Street right two, oh it's yeah. this point here see that box okay. that's our high point right there okay from yeah. there so the, from there down yeah so n about halfway to the existing houses if that paints right. a picture for anybody so so it will be the incline from Howard Street to the cul-de-sac so this is this is at about two percent which is very shallow. That, that's, that's permissible for a wheelchair to manage. That's how shallow that slope is. And then we go back and we're less than that at about 1%. So that's even shallower as we make our way back. So the road itself is not sloped very much. We just have to bring it up because of our groundwater concerns with the site. The road's pretty flat for all intents and purposes. And there'll be a lot of new additional trees and shrubs to absorb everything that you're cutting down. Yes. So, so right now, as far as this board is concerned, we have trees going all the way on the road, and then we've got conservation that's going to require a whole bunch of plantings for what's cut down in the buffer zone as well. So there will be a lot of new plantings out there, yeah. And these, the, the town's tree warden um, will help dictate what goes in around this roadway. Right now, each one of these symbols is a tree that we're showing. Now, the count, yeah, the town, the tree warden, but <coughs> as it stands today, we're showing quite a bit of trees. Count with the count. Conservation is asking you to show how many trees on the whole site you're cutting down, and not just in the resource area, or am I wrong about that? So, conservation, what we've presented to them <coughs> is. Right now, we have quantified the trees we're taking down in the 100-foot buffer zone, which goes to, is it that line? No. Sorry. No, 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 I'm just trying yes, to Yes, it is, I think. This line here? No, it looks too close. It does look too close. Oh, well, I can't see it. That's the 25, that's the 30, so maybe it is it this is, line. Yeah. So that's the 100-foot, so everything up on this side, we're taking down. 25 trees, yeah. and what the plan shows today in total, not just in the buffer zone, but in total, is 28 trees, mm -hmm. 28 trees. And I think what's going to happen is conservation is going to want more than that yeah. in the buffer zone. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then whatever comes out of dealing with this board and tree warden would be accounted for around the roadway. The, I believe the last feedback about conservation was that roadway trees cannot count towards buffer zone replacement trees, even if they're in the buffer zone, was kind of what they were alluding to. And I think it comes down to ownership for a few years and, and, and things like that, because anything in the buffer zone will need to be warranted and replaced and things like that. So there's quite a few <coughs> trees planted. 
Um, so I'm curious, how long of a time span will this affect the residents of Howard Street? Construction-wise? Yeah. That's a good question, Kevin. Can you speak to that one any more than me? I can't. I can't. I mean, construction, to fully develop it, once it started, it, it could be completed in six months. Well, but it doesn't well, necessarily mean it will be done in six months. There's a lot of factors. You're, you're probably talking to construction seasons to, to clear it, to build the road, to build the houses, right? They, they never take... To fully develop it. Okay, yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah. They, they never take less than... Right. I, I just, I'm, just, I'm just thinking from what I've seen around town, um, you know, at least two construction seasons. Um, so two summers. Um, it, it sort of depends when they clear um, and, and if, if permits, you know, sort of how, how that all flows. Sometimes it flows into Even the third year. Even the fastest year. one yeah. that I can think of in town, it's been two years. Yeah. So, so I can there's so much two on. years of trucks with backfill and hmm. construction noise. Well, um, that's not right. It takes two years. Not all of that two years is active. Right, so what typically you see is you see maybe two or three months of of pretty active uh, construction, and then what feels like forever of an open site, and then you see suddenly a whole you know a bunch of uh, crews come in and pour foundations, and then what feels like nothing for another couple of months, and so yeah, it I wouldn't think of it as two full years of constant construction. That's just not the, the <laughs> it's not the way contractors work. If all those trucks will be on my property, I mean on my, right in front of my I know house. Where, you live. where do you live? 44 Howard Street. Which one's that though? The, pre the one just before? <coughs> just across the street? Yeah, right across Fine. the street. Yeah. That lot right there. This one? The, no, that, that's the bigger one, the larger lot. This one? Yes. So I can expect to have all those trucks in front of my property for two years. I don't think anybody's going to walk that far. <laughs> <laughs> Earthwork activities will be more so related with roadway. And when you build yeah. homes, you know, you'll have carpenter crews and, and things mm -hmm. like that that aren't heavy right. excavation yeah. material, you know. Heavy excavation. Yeah, it's, you know, it's different. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have, like the electrician who's here, you know, that was But they wouldn't be able to go down, they wouldn't be utilizing any of the Howard Street expansion or it would just be basically... The new, you mean the new subdivision road? All the development, all the trucks and everything. I'm just trying to figure out what I get to live with if... Mm -hmm. <laughs> This proposal goes through for two years. Okay. Well, there's nothing saying that the person next to you isn't going to knock down their house and build something next to you either, so that could happen anytime. So there's rules but for when they can work. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They work that out right before they, they get their permits and they're told what to do. If they break those, you're supposed to call it in. We know. do pre-construction meetings where we talk about staging of materials, and we talk about truck access, and we talk about you know outreach to the neighborhood, and hours of construction, and dust mitigation, road the mitigation, fill, all that stuff. Has the control. Fill the bit all. Yeah. I I wouldn't think that there would be two years worth of you know heavy earth movement, and I mean it's not that big of a site, uh, but uh, two years. Or, or more from the time they you know start knocking down trees and, and start doing some earth movement until the time you see you know grass you know grass go on the lawns um, and, and houses being sort of finished um, so that second year probably you know right you've got a road there you've got you know, electricians or carpenters working inside so th that second year probably wouldn't impact you at all it's that it's that first year when you're doing um site work all right thank you thank you so we will proceed with the drt and uh, hope to be
back in January. So you've got DRT, you're, you're working your way or almost done with um, conservation? I, we have uh, I one, maybe two very minor comments left with conservation that I'm even hesitant to address because we wanted to get more feedback yeah. from here in engineering. Yeah. So I think we're very close with them. Yes, is the short answer. Right. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. So, so um, we should we motion continue to continue it. to oh. January 13th. Do we want to do the 13th? Is that? Um, I think I would prefer to do the 13th, especially not knowing what could come out of the DRT. You know, it could be a lot, could be a little, I think. I don't know. I mean, it's, <gasps> I'd rather be on there as opposed yeah. to, to skipping it. Mm -hmm. For a moment, okay. Mm -hmm. um, 8.30 on the 13th. Um, CPDC continues your public hearing for a definitive, definitive subdivision plan. 135, 139, and 149 on Howard Street to January 13th at 8 30 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Second. Thank you very much. John, Julie. Hi. Good job. Good job. Thanks for First question for you. Can we have a herd in the special permit? Without herd, no. You couldn't even have herd it. Well, there's some debate about that, but it's not really recommended. If, if there were a special permit application where you just didn't do it, you know, just too much information, some missing stuff, just getting started, she could have reviewed. So. Like in theory, she could have watched the video and yeah. then come and voted the next time. Um, yeah, it's not recommended. I'm just thinking yeah. of, like the worst case scenario. I mean, it's probably going to be a common case yeah. scenario, actually. We have um, judges coming in on South Main Street on the new mixed use special permit, yeah. and we still have a board that's missing a member. Thank you. Bye, guys. Okay. Have a good night, Rachel. All right. So, my estimates were a little off on timing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. I wasn't expecting either of those things to take as long as they did. Um, so, I'm really hoping that you guys will make a vote on the design guidelines tonight. And I highlighted five to six things that still need yeah. um, your attention. Mm -hmm. I went through and I accepted all the other, like, minor, more minor changes from the discussion in October. Um, and I also fixed the figures with the, all the, with the exception of one that I can't fix because I don't have the source document. Which one do you want to control the green? Uh, one that's the rise over run is incorrect. The ratio is incorrect. This. Two to one, not one to two. Send me something you want okay. to fix, fix it. It's just that one image it needs this to be one. fixed. Okay. I mean, I would have just I would just overlay the PDF if I can't find the source. Okay. I just did it. That's what you want. Okay. I just didn't know if, like, if yeah. obviously it's easier to edit the source probably. Oh, I don't know what the source is. Okay. I couldn't find it. I searched for it today on my archives, but. Oh. Uh, this is probably on my zip drive. You probably made subscribe. it. <laughs> 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 I wish I had printed my email for that standing question. Oh, but. here, I, I printed it out. You, you can. Oh, I forgot to. <laughs> Did y'all get a chance to give them another once over? Yeah. yeah. Since the last time around? Yeah. You did? I did because the game was just not interesting enough to win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the game is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool. Non-active sports uh, play a role in my life. I did print them out, but I don't know where I put them. No worries. Um. Yeah. You want your notes? Thank you. Okay. Take it. So, um, 
scrolling down, I think maybe we just quickly go through my five things and then we can get feedback from our. Yeah. Um, One concise statement tonight, though. Like, I tried to be as concise as I could. <laughs> Not you. I think he was talking about me. <laughs> Challenge me. <laughs> Um, so section 712, that's where we have one image that needs to be fixed, and then you had given another image for consideration that we never really talked about, Nick. Okay. This one here. Um, so I think what you were saying is that this, the step back from residential on the second, or above the first two stories, needs to be a minimum of 10 feet, where I think right now it's a minimum of five um, required which is well no well, it's not there is no um there wasn't a consideration for when it's a residential right property and did i say property or did i say district you said well there's a mix here so in the graphic it says district which i think in the graphic not that graphic the upper graphic. the upper graphic yeah. it says district um so yeah we need to change uh, that, that needs to be changed mm -hmm. to use mm -hmm. yeah um, and also on that graphic, right, it needs to be changed instead of one to two, two to one. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Mm -hmm. They tell me. They tell you because they say rise is. Rise over run. run. Sure. I mean, That's sure. what I learned in school. School. School was a long time ago, though. Um. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I think the, the new graphic came about from the discussions we had um, downtown, right, with the yeah. Yeah, building there. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's fine. Do we need to add it into the text anywhere? I think we do, because the text, um, yeah. The text talks about the other three step backs. Yes. What does it say? Oh, it says two to one in the writing, by the way, in the language. Okay. What is it? It says two to one in the writing. Yeah, I changed it. Oh, okay. Look at you. Because I can change text really easily. <laughs> um. So, so, yeah, so here. I think it needs to say. Oh, I have the text written. Text. You, you're asking for additional text. This yes. is an additional condition. Additional right? condition, yes. Because because uh, the way that it reads now, it doesn't address the rear of a building adjacent to a residential use. If we don't change it. The side yard or rear yard stuff. Front and rear and facades. Seems to. Front and rear facades of four story buildings. That's the first condition. That's the first drawing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's the basic. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Front and rear uh, facades. It has to do it either yep. at the second or the fourth oh. levels. Over here. And then we talk about side and rear where adjacent to a residential, a single family, two family, or three family. We talk about side or rear. Right, so the side or rear one was this two to one ratio. Right. Not specifically that once you're at two stories. And then, but yeah. do I say within 10 feet? What, what does my drawing say? It says 10 feet, a 10 foot min, 10 foot min here. Yeah, okay, so, so different condition because the top yeah. one is 15 feet, which is the setback. Yeah. Well, and the top one's the 15 foot and the ratio. Right. Yeah. You, so, that, so that yeah. ratio could be, it could be flatter and that would be fine. Like, it can set back further. Yeah. So it would need, like, you could change this text up here to say, bounded by a line projected from the property line at a two to one ratio with no less than a 10 foot step back at that second floor. It was just two different conditions where. Or something. Again. But they're related, I think. Well, let me see the other section again. I can't remember anything here. What do I write in the little red writing? Section at side or rear yard step back when abutting a single or two family use. So now we say single two or three, and that is the same as side or rear. It's the same as this but side or rear yard step away. back. So it's it's at least a 
two to one ratio. That's not two to one though when you're at ten feet. Well, it'd be, it would be, but it, but it wouldn't be a worse condition, would it? Well, I mean, like, what's this distance here? I guess it's still fifteen. I can't see what you're pointing to. So I know you can. <laughs> yeah. I'll use the mouse. So like, what's this distance here? It's a minimum of five feet. No, to make it a, a two to one ratio. No, but you're talking about two different things, right? Because that top is still the top, right? Here, right? The controlling, the controlling location is here, right? Yeah. No, no, the whole envelope has to be out inside that line. Right, so the whole envelope has to be inside. But in this instance, right, let's say the controlling issue uh, here, this has to be a minimum of five feet. Right? Well, I'm wondering. So according to here. According to there. So this could be more? Yes. It, could be, it could be less. This could be all pulled back more than 15 feet. It could be pulled. It can't go. This can't go closer than 15 feet. And this can't go um, steeper than 2 to 1. So in this instance, this right here is a controlling location. Those first three came about from scaling mechanisms to try and break up facades, right? Right. If you think about it, um, I don't know why I can't think of the name of the street. Pam Street there. The Golden Green. Gold. Gold. Wow. It'll all be gone soon. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> um, so they, they actually alternate that where that step back is between their little yeah. pieces. The next piece was specifically because we had right. some existing conditions that were closer than that, existing conditions closer than that 15 foot setback. And so <coughs> it was like, okay, you do a two story next to a, essentially a two and a half story house yeah. and you step back. That's why I think you need the extra. And you pull that back so that you, you're not getting all that massing from. <coughs> yeah, that was a 10 foot yeah. setback yeah. after that which we, we seem to have come up with during that review period. We yeah. looked at that building and said, okay, 10 feet seems to work. So that's going, why I think it's an additional sketch. Going down to, the, going down to the, the next one, what I see this doing is it's this, it's this two story here is really what you're getting at because right, this can be three stories. This if one's further back. Further, further back, back, right? This is saying, saying that you have to have a two at, after two stories. You have to have at least a ten foot setback. It sort of changes that. It could be it could be pulled. This whole thing could be pulled back even more, but it's still per, that. I was addressing the scale of single and and two family homes. Right, that's what that sketch was doing. Right, in which that forcing that at the two at the two. Story. Second story, right? Yeah, and the second story creates that different, that that scale. Mm -hmm. But if you've got that envelope, you're basically pushing everything back at story two anyhow. Either they've got to set it back from the lot line further to meet the envelope, or they can't go up that high. So if you've got, you can't move this forward. Otherwise, you get outside the envelope, yeah. correct? You can't move this forward, otherwise that portion is outside right. the envelope. So if the building itself is closer, you're not in the envelope. The only way to get any change would be to push it further away, and then you're well within the envelope, and you're further away anyhow. I think yours is just overkill. <laughs> Actually, mine puts the roof line, the second story roof line, outside that two to one, but then gives you more setback. I'm just looking, can you bring it up just a little bit more? If you're at 10 oh. feet, then two oh. to one. Thank you. So that's still 15 feet. Is that your two to one still? It that's won't be two to one. Well, that's 15 feet. foot, yeah. 10 two story feet. max, 10 foot minimum. What's that two, does that say two stories? Yeah, two so stories I think max, ten foot minimum. 
I think John pointed out a key difference here is that this could be, this five foot step back could be at the third floor or at the fourth floor yeah. right, instead of the yeah. after the second. Yeah. Whereas this one is has it to keeps be it after two the second. Foot, yeah, it keeps it. it or keeps it's that. supposed to be at. It keeps it like at the. So the language up here says five, it needs to step back a minimum of five feet at either the second or fourth floor levels. So actually. No, but that's front or rear. That that third sketch is for side, isn't it? Jesus, right. Uh, side, I thought it was for both rear and side. For side and rear yard step back shall be. Is that what the title, the caption yeah. underneath that says, side and rear? It doesn't no, say they don't here. say. I think that's the, the that's the problem. The text yeah. and the it images to don't say, totally it match. It needs to say rear as is 15, well. Is 15 feet the rear side setback? No, actually, um, only abutting a resident. This is only abutting a resident district. But Which is. That's the, oh, than so a that's different. That's the whole issue with the sketches. So the zoning you. talks about the abutting a district. Right, and that's what this is for. Though, yeah. To address that condition that we were saying, well, we don't have a district necessarily, but we do have uses. Right. How do we address the use? Well, so I would say, like, the, like to marry the two, right? So the 15 foot setback is for the residential district, but then the step backs are for the abutting the use. That's fine. I just, I'm. Because right, like we're not, I think it's in zoning, so we're not changing yeah. the zoning. We worked through right. what we felt were acceptable conditions on several developments, and it seemed to be those sketches, and so I think it should be in here. Because the word district is messing it up, right? They had no yeah. right. We have no mechanism to protect the use because it says district. But yep. the district is important if it matches zoning, and we're talking about the actual yes. setback of the building from. Yeah, I'm not saying yep. district away. I'm just, right. That's why I was adding. The so other maybe thing. we let me just look and, and see what the zoning says. Trying to address the uses. So oh, uh, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the step backs can address abutting uses. Right, because two stories, I mean, um, it's about the size of the house, anyways, and so you're not getting uh, this overwhelming scale, and then you're actually stepping back ten feet. So you're it's never going to feel that top story. You're s you're stepping back. Yeah, that's twenty five. Um, twenty five feet. Yeah, it's 15, 15 and ten. So it's what are you looking at? Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So in zoning, the minimum side or rear setback when abutting a residential zone, which is the same as a residential yeah. district, is fifteen feet. So that the word district should stay in that instance right. um, to match the zoning bylaw. In that top one. Yeah. And that's yeah. why the okay. second sketch. Um, right. And then you need the second sketch when you're talking about uses. Yeah. Okay. And does it say right. that? Okay. We can certainly make it. Throwing these around for so long. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's side or rear yard, and it's still okay. Got it. Okay. Glad okay. we talked that one through. Should we have a paragraph to describe this? <laughs> Just a comment. Um, yeah, we've closed through most of, of my comments. Um, Julie, I know you've made many changes, which did incorporate a lot of the suggestions, which I, I think we. I know I, I really appreciate, it, and that's great. Um, there were some other changes that were made. One of which was um, in many areas where you took out the definition of residential neighborhood as well. Um, so my, my my question, and it comes up here, is that uh, first of all, you. Um, in, in every other section, and even in the, in the narrative here, you're talking about adjacent to a single family use. And Nick, you, you are using the word abutting, and I, I, I would like to suggest that, it, that I, know, I know it's abutting in the above, in the above yes. picture, but it should be adjacent here because it's adjacent that you use throughout uh, section yeah. 10. And, and, my, and I wanted to ask the question, since you took out um, neighborhood. Um, Change abutting to adjacent. Residential neighborhoods. Are you, are you defining adjacent uh, to mean nearby and neighboring, or are you defining? Uh, I'm concerned that you were defining it the way abutting is defined, which is actually contiguous to the to the well, line. Well, let, <laughs> so a, a side yard, right? We're talking here about side yard and rear rear yards. Right. I, adjacent is abutting. In this instance, and and I'll go furthermore and say that 
uh, because I looked, and we'll talk about this as we get into the, the back here. There are no more than 12 properties in this whole zone that, that aren't adjacent, that are, aren't adjacent to existing residential uses. That, that are 12. 12. Wait, can you say that again? No more than 12. 12 properties in, within the zone. Within the DSGD. Yes. That aren't abutting or adjacent. Don't have a, uh, 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 in, in, in that case, I, I'm talking about e across the street because, um, it, which doesn't apply in this particular case because that would be the front yard. Um, but um, all but 12 are uh, but some uh, sort but of single, some sort two, of family single family. two family or three family um, uh, residential use. But with all due respect, that would mean that there are 12 that would not be covered by this. And I yeah, guess, yeah. Um, and that's my that's my right. point is that, that they're uh, 55 Haven, um, okay. Haven. Um, uh, they are uh, right. <laughs> they're. Um, um, Did you make a list? Did you write? No, list? no. I went through. I went great. through and looked at well, them. They're all they're you know, all residences that are on Gould Street or Green Street, and there could be a right. So think there. about that. Like Ash Street, any any one any property that butts up to the the that's along Ash Street. Anything that uh, it backs up to, to backs up to the backside of Green Street, so that pretty much takes care of all of that part. Um, there's a couple of properties down in that little triangle um, uh, near the Washington. We don't, you know, yeah. um, near that uh, sort of near Dunkin' Donuts, sort oh, of like yeah, across yeah. from there, mm -hmm. um, and then a couple of properties along Main Street. Um, that don't necessarily abut, uh, um, you know. But there are, there are. Most of them are already run. Uh, Lind, uh, is it Linden or Sanborn or? I mean, uh, I don't know, know because they're right all. They're pretty much all. They're pretty much all, you know, back up to residential properties. And so when and I and I did that. I, I you know I looked at that because we really need to think, you know, if if you restrict. If whatever we restrict to abutting a or adjacent, I'm using these terms interchangeably, uh, uh, those, whatever we restrict in those properties, we're restricting essentially the whole district, aside from those 12 units and 12 locations. And some of those 12 properties have already been been developed. But you're only um, restricting them relative to residential uses. Me, me, no, yes, yeah, I, yeah, no, I, I agree. You're in this case, right? You're only restricting them. You're restricting them in that sight line, which I think is appropriate. But but I want to bring that up because it's not one or two. It's essentially the entire district. Every single property is, aside from twelve, are adjacent to those. So we're really expanding the protections that we're adding into these design guidelines. Yes, yes. right. Yeah. And I would argue that's that's for the just, good. But you know, it's. No, we're, I don't think he's making a. You're not making. I think no, I'm just, just saying, saying that fact. when we think about, don't think of these as ones or twos. Thinks we're we're. It's stated as. So in, in some particular conditions, no, it's not. We shouldn't think about it. It's it's those. It's essentially the entire district. Um, so we're we're changing, I, in some cases, fairly dramatically the the design guidelines. Well, I, I, obviously, I'm not not going to argue it. Yeah. Uh, no, I, and I'm not. Don't make it, mean to make it a, an argument. Right. I, I just want want us to right. sort of understand what we're doing. I, I understand. Although I would I would want to add, John, that. Uh, um, I, I don't think adjacent does mean abutting. I think th those are two different terms, and they have two different meanings. But I would also argue that, uh, or, or assert, yeah. that, that you also use within this design guidelines the term directly abu uh, adjacent. So to me, right. I mean, which we should, right? I, I honestly I agree. thought yeah. that adjacent meant what I thought yeah. it meant, which was neighboring. Um, but but anyhow, that's all right. I'm going to say. I, I would assert that that it should apply to adjacent in a more broad. Term, um, but it, it's your call. I've made my point. I, I agree. We should be consistent on terminology. Um, uh, if it doesn't mean abutting, it 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 doesn't matter, right? <laughs> because you know it will apply to those those twelve uh, those other twelve properties that we missed. Um, 
you know, that aren't abutting, directly abutting. Um, so it sort of almost doesn't matter one way or the other because we got them all covered. If, if you feel as though they're all covered yeah. and I feel okay, I'm, I'm not so sure I, I share that, but that's fine. So, back to the diagram. <laughs> um, so we're keeping this diagram that Nick made and we're just going to um, make the language that captions it match um, talk, when we talk about side or rear setback and then we'll talk about the single two family, three family use. Mm -hmm. um, adjacent. So we'll say like safe. section at side yards, side or rear yard step back, where adjacent to a single two family three family use. Yep. Did you add that caption or is that part of the original? No, like you, it's a little different than the wording you have there. Oh, figure figure seven one two. Oh, I added I added it. Do you want it labeled as A B C D? Um Does that help at all? I don't think so. Okay. I mean I don't if you need something drawn just I'll take mark a look it at it tomorrow and try to what you want. Okay. Okay. I'll take a look at it tomorrow. Um And do we need to say something in the text about this, I guess, would be the question. And that's what Tony said. Do we need another paragraph? Yeah. Kind of uh, explaining it. We probably do. Um, yeah, it's basically that last line. Yeah. Right? We're buildings. Yeah. And then we just have to change the last parameter. So use a side or rear and step back. So it'll be such that. Step back shall be. The buildings shall step back. Step back, step back, step back at the second floor. At the second story. Oh, at the third story, really. Right? Third story shall step back. Whatever. Yeah, but um, like basically the a minimum of ten feet. Yeah. The second or third, right? I mean, that's because that's a minimum. Right. It could be a one-story projection that then steps back. Well, what's your vision? Is, is the building supposed to be one story and then a step back, or two stories and then a step back? My vision is that it's not more than two stories. Right. So okay. it will be, yeah, at the second or third floor. Then you want to get into whether you want to talk about whether there's a use on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> the balcony, yes. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Could be, but that would be something that that's sort of conditioned Should during the that view, right? If there's like, nothing yes. going on on the next yeah. side, you get the break and it's a nice space. Yeah. Yep. But you are showing a second, the, the step back on, on the second picture. On that red picture? No, on the middle one right there. That's a step back uh, after the first story, right? That's so it's, that's like at the second floor, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. yeah, so and that's the five foot. But they're saying we would do a ten foot either at the second floor or at the third floor. It abuts like your house, John. <laughs> or, I know that's not possible. <laughs> the is um, that, that left, that right side sketch there in gray, though, if that were pushed back a little more, it could be the third story that, that does the step because the angle is what counts. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It's the angle that counts in that picture. So if they so decide to you increase the setback angle. beyond the minimum, they could go up to that third floor potentially and then step back. Whereas right. Mm -hmm. right. Finding that residential use one, two story, one or two or three family, we want them to step back at the second story. That's, at least that's yeah. the way I wrote it. Yeah. If you guys agree, then we can write yeah. it that way. All right, so I'll write that. Okay. Should we move along to the next? Yep. Yes. Okay, so section 851. What's about utility areas and utilities? Um, I credited some of the proposed language to John. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Um, but I thought we should talk <laughs> about it. Um, and I think it's uh, there's some valid points um, and but then I would it might be hard to locate the loading docks dumpster dumpsters mechanical equipment and utility meters in low low visibility locations as well as as far as possible from adjacent residential uses which are, might be all like on all three sides and I just think that's really tricky language to try to accommodate 
Um, What's this? So I think maybe we would want to prioritize, like have an, and, and even maybe separate loading docks, which we actually want them to be useful, and we want people who are delivering or dropping things off to see them and use them. Um, well, yeah. a loading dock is definitely different than a loading, loading zone. area or zone. Yeah. Zone. Yeah. yeah. But I think we're really probably talking about loading zones. Yeah, I can't even imagine someone spending the space right. in right. downtown yeah. Reading for a loading dock. Uh, yeah, and there's <laughs> definitely there are definitely vehicular movements associated with a dock that are very difficult. So yeah. yeah. So we probably want to change that text to loading area, loading zone, loading space. Loading. Boy. We call them loading spaces, I believe, in the parking. Yeah. Yeah. That would include loading dock. If somebody proposed a dock, that would be their loading area, and we would address it. Yeah. As a loading. Area. Is it next to the space it's going to be loading? How does it, is it adjacent yeah. to the residence? Can you access it? So I think that would be okay. And I'm not really sure we would want that to be in a low visibility location. I just think it needs to be designed nicely, but it needs to be visible so it's used and useful and so that loading doesn't end up then happening on the street. So j if this is Jonathan's language. My language is just, uh, again, it's the, it's the residential changes. neighborhood yeah. part. Yeah. And that wasn't included originally. The rest of it was, was in here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get the um, I get the gist of this, and it's kind of like unspoken. We're yeah. Always, we're always sort of addressing this anyways, and we propose a dumpster next to the residence, and we tell them to move it. Right. We've done that just about every time, I think. Yeah. So how do we word this so that it it's not an impossibility? As far as possible. It could be something like consideration, consideration shall be given. For, right? Like, yeah, like, I, I don't know. Shall be located in such a way as to minimize the impact to adjacent residential uses, you know, as approved by the board or something. Um, without specifically saying it has to go over here. And maybe we just take loading, the whole loading thing out of that one. And just leave it at, you know, dumpsters, mechanical equipment, and utility meters. I mean, the second yeah, paragraph does. there talks about screening these things. But dumpsters also need to be accessible, too. So, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But that's what that says right there. Yeah. E52 talks about if they're not hidden inside the building, then we have to screen them. So yeah. the first statement is about shall not interrupt the continuity of the sidewalk. And yet, the well, the I guess the entrance to the Gold Street property garage is interrupts the sidewalk like it's supposed to. But that's also not on this list of things that can't interrupt the sidewalk. Oh, but that's where their loading spot is. It's right yeah. inside that entrance. But, um, shall be located as to minimize the impact on adjacent residential uses. Minimize the visibility and the impact to something like that. It gives us enough, yeah. it gives us direction, and then we have to address it during site plan review. Right. The goal of the design guidelines is to tell the developer, hey, this is what we're looking for. Don't put it next to there because yeah. we're going to make you move it. Consider this right. when you're putting it on the plan. To minimize the visual impact to adjacent. Not just visual impact. The visual impact, no, that's not it. Because it has to be I was trying to write with impact. Tony. What did you say? I don't know. It would have stole yours. You have to minimize. We're going to minimize the visual impact, but we want to minimize the impact to the adjacent residential right. uses. It's more than just the visual impact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could say minimize the visibility of and impact to adjacent residential uses. Sure. Okay, you and initially I said uh, it should be located at the rear side of buildings where they're not visible from primary commercial streets. I just added or neighboring residential. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we still want that though when we can get it. What'd you say? We still want to minimize its visibility mm -hmm. from the primary commercial streets. 
<laughs> so like that, then you can't. That, that's like every single side of the building. building. Where are you going to put it? I mean, I, I think I think there should be some sort of hierarchy. Yeah, there right? is. There like, is a hierarchy, right? If there is no residential, it's, it's one of the twelve. <laughs> uh, we'll put it in the back. It just feels like it's 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 just yeah. Maybe they're all going to end up inside because these lots are all just going to be built. Out so we them. we try to we try to bring up ideas so that when you're reviewing, when one is reviewing a site plan, you're considering these things. Is it better? not to have it visible from the primary street and in the back, or is the back too much impact to the adjacent, if there's an adjacent residential property, or if it's a commercial property, then well, that's okay. They both share utility spaces in the back there, and that's the better space. So yeah, don't make it as general as you want, as long as there's some direction, just a little bit of direction. Yeah. They're not giving up storefront, right? I mean. It, they're not giving up frontage. Unless that's the only way to get into the building, and that's your garage entrance or your driveway or something. They're just not going to give up the space. They're, 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 they're going to wheel out the, just do it right the dumpsters right. when right. the truck and comes. See it. Right, right, I'll do. Just well, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the yes, the Sunoco did. Yeah. We're gonna do, we're gonna open the word version and just Town meetings have at it right now because <laughs> it's just better with them here and they know what we decide and I don't have to try to dream it up tomorrow. Can I ask you? A, I had a couple of comments that I had emailed you from. Uh, yes. Should I wait until you've gone through your points and then tell you mine, or do you want them all in order? Maybe it's helpful to have them in order. What did I do with that email? I. I, I have them here. It's just one, the one about the trees and the other one about the windows. Ah, oh, there it is. Um, well, so the trees is further. Oh, wait, no. Trees is in section 836. Eight, eight, we'll go back to okay. that after. Let's just finish this and then sure, we'll go back sure. to that. Mm -hmm. So I, I gave you a printed email from Sarah. Here's some comments she sent me earlier today. You did? Email from Sarah. All right, all right, I have it. I don't even think it was in the packet. Hopefully, it's not. Never mind. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. I think it was better before I was going to say, oh, we just, we just add a couple words. Can we just go back? Sure. All right. Just, I think. Oh, you can just do undo. Control Z. Okay. So, okay. Low visibility locations that minimize the impact. Our changes is not on right now. Well, I propose that instead of reflective window coatings, we prohibit vinyl siding. <laughs> I mean, it's... That you what? I, I say we prohibit vinyl siding. No. You already have prohibited vinyl siding in here. I, I'm talking about, like, people like... Yeah, yeah on residential them. properties. What's that? I'm saying to prohibit it on residential properties. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's as reasonable as... So I, the ref I understand this. the reflective coatings you're talking about actually are typically on larger commercial buildings. Yeah. Um, they don't usually have that kind of a reflective coating on a residential scale window. Well, it's really funny, but I, I have seen it several, I just found out about it a couple of this past year, and now I drive around and I look at it, and I've seen it in, you know, Peabody and Salem and Newburyport, where you have houses that are like, right now we're, I don't know, eight feet now from the new gold 
thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we all have vinyl siding. And, we're, and you see like the rippling siding in some places. And I know it is the, some of the older siding can't take the higher temperatures that come on. And, they, and these windows now have these coatings on them for energy savings. Yeah, but the low E coatings on the third surface. So it's inside. It's actually not reflective. It's um, diffusive, so it doesn't let the UV else. light coming in. Yeah, it's the reflective coating. So when you look yeah. at the skyscrapers in Boston yeah. that are mirror reflective, it's those types of coatings. That type of a surface that's reflecting the heat off of a large surface and back down. What um, the low E coatings do is they just they just reduce how much UV light is getting in through the glass. They're not necessarily ref reflecting any more than a normal window. Um, but it does happen. I mean, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it might, but I mean, if the buildings are only eight feet apart, you're probably not getting the right kind of sun angle to reflect. I don't know. It was just something that I saw, so I, get I, it. I threw I get it out it. there. It's not common on, yeah. Um, yeah. if someone were to come and do, uh, if it's one of the 12, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's proposing like a four-story building that's yeah. all glass, which yeah. is not going to happen in Reading, mm -hmm. um, we would probably look at that to be sure that we weren't creating some kind of heat island that would be just as um, yeah. detrimental yeah. to the area as that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's definitely the, the more industrial, commercial glass than it is uh, residential units. That's Walker's Brook Drive. Walker's Brook. Um, Walker's Brook. Where do they have glass? <laughs> Seriously? No, I mean, it's not there oh. now, but I mean, that's, oh. that's the only place where that might occur. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, like if the tower, like if the Hallmark yeah. Health building, or so if they put a new tower in the task building, they might do mm. glass. But mm. Yeah, I've, I've heard of this happening with, um, not with vinyl siding, but maybe. cars or something getting damaged from mm -hmm. towers that had reflective glass. London, I think, was one condition. Something in London, yeah. one of those towers. So we have some language on the screen. Here. Oops. too big. Hmm. Oh no, I think that's good. So, just tell me if you think that captures what, what we're trying to, where we're going. It's good. Uh, but it wasn't, <coughs> so it's visibility and impact are two different things. Right, because the impact, you, you might not yes. see that dumpster, but you can hear them loading it. But I, I, doesn't this get at two different things? If they're in low visibility locations, that minimize the impact to... Oh, how about the located ends. in low visibility locations and that minimize yeah, the impact? Yeah, yeah. 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 And. Yeah, sorry, because yeah. it's, it's, it's a visible... Yeah. Yeah. I think that low visibility areas and the locations, I think double uh, duplicating wards. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Minimize in lo shall be located in. Uh, let's see. I scrolled it. Uh, minimize that. Minimize visibility. Visibility to mm -hmm. and impact. No. I, I like this because it also includes the main roads. Yeah. Low visibility areas. Period. Yeah. Oh, now you can get rid of the uh, that. Now you can get rid of the that and minimize the impact. Should be located in low visibility areas. No, you can't. I think you have to have the that. Um, and then I think you need to. I I, I like that. That's what about that last part of that sentence? And she'll not interrupt the continuity of the sidewalk and building facades. I think that's okay. We can leave it because we can waive everything. In yeah. The guidelines. Um, <laughs> because I, well, I wouldn't worry about. I mean, yeah. yeah, they've got real problems if, if the dumpsters are interrupting <laughs> the continuity of the sidewalk. Um, but, right, I, I can see, I can see uh, mechanical equipment, you know, yeah. um, right. them trying to force something out around. So, Pretty Haven has a section in the back where all the, the okay. containers go, right? Good. 
It's behind the Yes, board. yeah. Um, so I think that the loading zones, um, I was looking at that in the parking section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there are two places that that goes. Um, uh, Eight point two point five parking areas and loading zones. Right here. Yep. I just I just discovered some Barnes language that I didn't copy correctly. Um, and the town Did you make it better? <laughs> I'm going to make it. Hold on. I have to go fix it. Oh. See, this is supposed to be single family. <laughs> to match the other Burns language. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 8.2.1. Yeah. Okay. Driveways and loading zones. Well, uh, I don't know. Because where else are they going to put it? Like, the, the truck can't overhang the sidewalk, but it can yeah. go across the sidewalk to get into a loading zone. Uh, or, or sorry, to go in a driveway. It the continuity of pedestrian spaces, right? I mean, maybe it, 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 it it's interrupts. It's impossible because all driveways interrupt the sidewalk at some point. Uh, you're taking that too literally. Driveways and loading zones shall not interrupt the continuity of sidewalks and pedestrian spaces. So John's saying potentially the driveway is at a different elevation, for example, as you No, I'm, I'm saying that the loading zone where the truck is forced to park, um, the truck is forced to park across the drive across the sidewalk and for as they're loading in and out force people to walk out on the street that's not good that's not good we're not having that right okay. it, you know that's that's functional like that's a function of this if the the curb cut means the truck has to drive over the sidewalk sure right you really want that either right right okay. all right but if the the loading zone forces you know um interrupting that pedestrian flow, that pedestrian space, that's no good. Okay, and can we, can we, are we done with loading? I think so. Okay, so Sarah had a section, a question, a comment on the tree section, which is 836. Um, which is language that has been in this, in these design guidelines since the beginning of time. And we did not change it this time around, as far as I know. It yeah, I hadn't even read it before. Me like today I was going through the whole thing with the rulers before I came. Yeah, my question was what I said in the thing. It just seemed odd because it, in this, isn't everybody going to their property lines, basically? So how do you keep any trees? You know, and then how do you enforce it? And, you know, I was, that's, that was, you know. And then saying preserving four trees. I, I don't know how you would do it. Get an acre lot. Right. The um, postmark and um, Reading Village, which is not a 40R, but those were roughly one acre lots. Did they have four six inch caliper trees on them to begin with? Even, I, I would question that even on, um, well, on E mark, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't it, there were some trees back there. I don't think there were four six inch caliper. There were there were like trees like this. Uh, there were the giant ones that were growing in the foundation. Yeah. There was the one on the corner of where like where the corner of the building went that they were gonna try to save if they could. Right. But the I, root system got right. it was too hard to make that work. And then there was one that was that was sort of over on the other side. Yep. And I know they they grew you know, those were trees that grew from neglect. They were damaging the building that was there. They should have been taken down long before they got that big. 
Maybe so. so I, I'm not really talking yeah. about that. I'm just talking about how why is this even in here? I don't it's know. not even possible to have trees. <laughs> That's all. And how can you make them? Is it aspirational? But if we can preserve trees, we I mean, like maybe the language should be a little bit less shell and a little bit more, if yeah. possible. It's an yeah. Yeah. every effort in the way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because like what do we have across the street now that we've expanded the district. Is there actually a lot or a series of lots that have this on the? Um, on the east side of Main Street? Why not? But like this was in the original. I know. So what did you, did you have lots like this the first time around? No, I think we or were, just, we were looking to house? preserve yeah. some trees if they existed. Yeah. So we should. Well, like it's been a problem. <laughs> so we, uh, basically under the landscaping, it, it's you're just sort of saying this is what we would like, but nothing's required kind of thing. Because my other my other uh, thought was to say it would be nice to have window boxes since this kind of sounds like you're talking about putting properties right up to the sidewalk. I mean, window boxes would be really nice. You know, some people I know they used to do them like the hitching post and all that years ago. But wondered if you would add in that somewhere. You can't step back the buildings enough to get a decent landscaping. Right. Well, so I think that we have seen this somewhere. Was it in the design guidelines? It's something about um, we would allow we we can allow something to overhang a sidewalk by two feet, but no more than that. So, like a window box could fit into that um, that parameter. I'm trying to remember where I saw that. I'm not going to spec oh. window boxes. Awnings? Somebody can that propose awnings? them and see what they look like. But I'm not going to spec window boxes. Somebody's going to go buy a cheap window box and. You know, throw some basil plants in it or something stupid. It it has to be better designed than that. Landscaping that creates usable public open space or continues existing public open space is encouraged. Postmark has that in their little um, little entrance alcove on Sanborn, right? Yes. Yes, it does. Right. So they took that as an opportunity. Yeah. They had the ability because the site was big enough where they could get right. their program in and they yeah. gave up and they created this little space. That's the hope. But when we're talking about the much smaller lots, they're not, if they step back four feet, you're not planting anything in there. Not yeah. anything substantial. Right. You're not planting trees anyway. Right. You're planting right. something small. Yeah. So the better option is to have a nicer facade and have the street take the trees you know, just have the right street right. trees which is in here yeah right. providing so street get trees. enough of a yeah. box in there for the tree root to, to actually mm -hmm. live and I thought we didn't we give them an option to potentially create space elsewhere is that not in here or is that just something we talked about create space uh, uh, open space in lieu of no. kind of thing. Oh, we, like a tr transfer development. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like think we talked about that. Built a park down in the corner yeah. there. Um, I changed 836. I don't know if that's like too much, but I just pared it down a little. It ends on Shelby, Shelby. and then it ends with preserved. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, yeah, it's right. purple. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's about as good as you're going to get. Yeah. I mean, we, like, you know, we always look at, I was just thinking about it with the subdivision, like, what, are, what, tr what trees are coming down and is it possible to yeah. reconfigure and keep them or whatever. So... I don't know that there are that many trees. So, so on 8.3.2, could you say something about window boxes? Are encouraged, or, or did you not? You don't like the idea of window boxes? I don't like the specific idea of window boxes. I, I don't mind saying. Um, um, but this alternative goes you know, through a review, right? So it does. if it's in here, window boxes and. It, some applicant or architect or whatever thinks what a great idea and they propose it you can have the conversation with them about what it is really that you're looking for 
So they don't end up crappy. But they're just gonna put window boxes in. Like, oh, we'll our, to the end of our the crappy facade going. with our crappy sign. I don't know, some little window boxes. You know, like there should be an effort for landscaping. You can you can put a list of things in there then. Uh, planters are better than window boxes, like some significant planter at the ground level. You know, that's got some some depth to it that can plant something in. Planters can be tripping hazards. I think window boxes they just had so much charm because it starts sort of like a competition between businesses and everybody wants to outdo somebody else. I don't know. I, I, I love window boxes. A window box that, that projects into the right of way. I think it's probably fun. doesn't meet ADA. I think um Okay, because if you're if you're more than four inches above the surface, you can't project out more than four inches. Four feet. Four what? inches. Four inches, never mind, sorry. Right. I, I don't so know. a blind person walking down the street can't find that box. I don't mind having language that talks about things, but like specifically say put a window box in. Just we're not saying put, we're not saying put a window box in. We're saying it could be a list if we could figure out how to. Fine, find a, a list of things. Such as, or well, I.E. I think like it's. I like the way six point one uh, talks so much about you know types of design elements and what what we want. Kind of like. If you read between the lines, it says things like window boxes. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, the whole 6.1, 6.2, reflect the traditional New England vernacular, remain true to historic New England form. It should appear to be a 21st century New England village with roots in traditional New England architectural style. I mean, that kind of, I mean, at least there it's, much window boxes would fall in there, so I, it's okay. I, I, you know, I just thought I would. You you have to, you'll just have to come to every 40R hearing. <laughs> yeah. 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 How about window boxes? Okay. No. Right there. Oh, down landscape. I think that's about it. And then the next paragraph talks about composition. If you can come up with some language that talks about window boxes, it doesn't sound like you're telling them to put window boxes. <laughs> you know, because then it just becomes this perfunctory thing, right? Mm -hmm. oh, here's my window box, here's my sign. I don't like the way this is worded. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's a little we negative. The rabbit hole. It's a little negative. This last sentence here, smaller landscape areas and open spaces should be integrated throughout a development project with an emphasis on functionality, such as providing a comfortable shaded place to sit and not simply aesthetic appeal. I think we could get rid of this. Except to and or you can say and improve. You can get yeah. rid of the whole such as. Yeah, just ended it functionality. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's do it. There's nothing wrong with aesthetic appeal. Right. And we're making it seem like there is. The window box. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they such as window Like box. it's an herb. <laughs> you're growing your herbs for your restaurant. It's functional. Right. So there right. you have it. Well, you're allowed to grow six plants, so. You're growing your <laughs> People are just walking down the street right. picking it. 10.3. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we're going in the right order here. Six. Um, Is that where it was? Yes. Ten, we're in 10 now? 10.3. All we're right. We're from 8.51 to 10.3. Yeah. Little So I just wanted to make sure I brought this section, this comment to your attention before I just said, yep, this is what you want, because I don't know if we ever really talked about it. Um, maybe zoom out a tiny bit more. Oh, 
Those are tired of waivers, right? Waivers. What? Waivers are fantastic. Yeah. I had both taken it out. Um, had you? You know, yeah. 20 yeah. architects doing different projects are going to come up with a lot better no, I than we I are. Understand. Yeah. I mean, there's probably not a project that could meet every single design parameter. Unless it's just talking about I guess, what, what's your comment here? I mean, I, I'm not sure I well, understand. I just wanted to make sure you were okay with me leaving, putting this clause in. That yeah, you I think you I, have I, to. I had done that, and, okay. and you're right. It should it should be keep stay in there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Ten four one. Great. This is the height. I don't understand what this is. What that thirty percent of what? So, I, I don't understand this. So. Basically, um, I I think that this was from Dave Tuttle. Had originally said like thirty percent of the height of the neighborhood or something. Right, and so like here that. we're saying like the maximum height permitted. So for a mixed use building, I think it's forty five feet. So mm -hmm. you go up to sixty. That's a lot. This was just a starting point to talk yeah. about. Like, yeah, I, I guess I I I don't think that this. Uh, I think that what we did in the previous section, specifically in you know in 7.1.2, yeah. addressed the height. Um, I don't. I think that we're doing something wrong here if we have a second section in here that addresses height for those 12 um, properties. But wasn't this to prevent somebody from coming in and filling the site five feet? higher let's say and then going off of that basis isn't that what this was about redevelopment site grade i mean we have height specified in the zoning by law too but you can go 45 feet or from, excuse. from the average grade and then you or you can get a waiver if you do you know like postmark they right, let's say it's building. whatever it's 45 feet from average grade mm -hmm. and where do you determine average grade from if you think about signage, we have that whole section in the yeah. signage that talks about right. mm -hmm. well, what average grade is or where the greatest the sign is. Right. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes in and fills a site, what if they had filled, what if they were able to knock down the front of the post office? Would their height be from <coughs> the, the top sandborn? Of the top of sandborn? So the way we define height in the zoning bylaw yeah. is the vertical distance from the average grade around the perimeter of a building to the top of a flat roof, including any parapet, or to a point halfway between the bottom of an eave and the top of the ridge of a sloped roof. So, yeah, so where's, the, where's the grade? Average the perimeter. Grade around the perimeter of the building, but is it is it perimeter the proposed the building? building? Yeah. And then they could mound it. Yeah, so if they went, if they came in and filled, you know, the Haven Street end of it and said, well, we're going 45 feet from the top of Sanborn, so we can go an extra, what is it, 15 feet, 20 feet drop from Sanborn to Haven? See, the issue from, from, from my perspective, I mean, I, I, I was, you had the lang some language in there before, but I had proposed no more than 10 feet above the ridge line of the tallest, uh, the tallest ridge line within 100 feet. I think that's where mm -hmm. you were getting that. And and it was the idea, but you want to you want to keep it somewhere in scale with the with the residential neighborhoods. I mean, keep in mind this section 10 is dealing with the the areas abutting residential air neighborhoods or residential uh, uses. Just right. Right. all those 12 yeah, those 12 right. parcels. However many, they are residential uses. Yeah. And, no, no, no. So no, but I guess, uh, I, which is why why this came up. You know, right. why That's right. I was like, okay, if if we are are setting up this section 10, 10.4, uh, or, or this section 10 to address uses that about residential units, I mean, use residential uses. What are what what are those? Wh which are those? And so I started counting. I'm like, well, it's easier to count the ones that that this doesn't apply to. Um, 
And so uh, where I am on this section, I think there are some pieces that I, I, I don't have a problem with it because it, it sort of gets to that point that we need to, um, we need to, uh, developers need to think a little bit harder about how they address um, uh, those, those abutting uses. But it, if we interpret this too literally, um, this controls, this section controls the entire rest of the, we can throw this away. <laughs> That's true. Well, it's and just this we is what we've got. Single family, two family, and we three family some stuff in here yeah. that, may, that means that this now covers the whole area. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I was going to say, it, go ahead. And, and so if, if we're, if you're saying, you know, I don't know what this says, right? What this what this says now, thirty percent greater. But I think we need to be cautious about what we say here. Really controls it controls essentially the the entire site, mm -hmm. uh, right. the entire district. District. It, um, it might be fewer than twelve if you consider there are other parameters here that define a transitional area as well. So any of those twelve might be at the district edge. No, I included that. Yep. Oh, you yes. you look yes. you oh. Uh, I use this you definition. Use all these. I okay. use this you didn't just look yes. at adjacency to. Space. No. Okay. No. Got it. But, it, uh, mind you, pretty much the entire the entire edge is is adjacent to a residential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, mean, I, I agree, John. I mean, and I know uh, it is a complex and difficult task. Right. I mean, yeah. the only reason we're here. Is because of the uh, what happened from yeah. Google Street. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Yeah, so we're just, yeah. You know, just having to, you I'm guys have to deal with having, <laughs> having to deal with the fallout from that. So I, I guess all I'm getting at is right. This is 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 what I think. In some of these cases, we've we've already baked into to the rest of of this. Um, uh, height is one of those that I I think that we've we did do. Like, you know what we just talked about. I mean that really that really address that if if we want to uh, uh, deal with the thing about changing changing grades uh, um, you know that we didn't address but um, but I, I guess I feel like we we address that fully in the rest of the of the um, well, I think the you can take out the second part of that sentence because that 30% thing just, never made sense to me but uh, we could just, just said yeah right from there right yeah, if you get rid right. of that that basically says that's that's what your grade was. Right. Now again, we can waive some of this if if there's some really extraordinary condition. Yeah. Or yeah. Or yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And now height is defined elsewhere, like the actual height, but this yeah. is the grade. Right. Yeah. And so actually, this can work in tandem with the definition we have in the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. Just We're not happened. really at odds. Exactly. Yeah, post mark. But then I question: Does that really belong in this section that's specifically about adjacent to residential uses, or shouldn't this really apply to the entire thing? Mm -hmm. Well, ten point four does not say it's adjacent to residential uses. So no, but section ten does. Oh. does. Okay. Yes. So I mean, it could be maybe moved to. I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, I agree with that, but I think it applies everywhere in here. I, yeah, this maybe. But doesn't this section virtually apply to the entire district? Except there might except be a couple, there's except 12. there's the 12 exceptions, <laughs> yeah. right? So if you're, you're really lucky if you ha have signed a purchase and sale from one of those 12 exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> so Postmark Square is one of the exceptions, correct? Yes. So this wouldn't even apply to them, and they could have still built Actually, up. Actually, no. No, the no? Top because there was a, a little corner, yeah. was a single family, and then yeah. the single family zoning district came right oh, down yeah. the center line yeah, of the street. Yeah, right, so it's yeah, 11, right. it's not 12. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to do much, because they didn't have much yeah. of an adjacency, but. Well, yeah, people never showed up at your hearing, I think, either. Um, at a height, uh, an elevation change, too, that was significant, I think, in that corner. Let's accept this. Yeah, get, get it out of there. Yeah. And then we can figure out where to put building height. Um, 
should we talk about this next highlight and then we can figure out where to put the building height thing if we want to and then I think we're done right mm -hmm. uh, 10.43 was the last one you mentioned yeah yep. And you don't need both. I mean, I, as as I recollect, I, I you wrote the the first one. I, I wrote the second one first, the highlighted part. Julie, you you changed it to the first part, and the first part is, is certainly fine. I just liked the other one better, so I put it back in. You, you guys decide. What do you mean, Jonathan? What first part of what? So the, the highlight highlighted, the highlighted language I had added in one of the earlier iterations months ago. Julie, when she came back, uh, I, I think from maternity leave, um, rewrote a lot of the document and rewrote that section to the first sentence there. So then I then came back and, and put back in the highlighted stuff instead of that. But but e either one is basically fine as far as I'm concerned. You're saying it's an instead of, not yes, an addition. Yes, yes. Okay, let me read this one. This way. I don't mind either way, it's fine. Uh, either. <laughs> Whichever one you guys like best. What is our what is Redding's architectural character, by the way? Ask <laughs> John. He wrote it. What did he no, He wrote the second part. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> <trying to. laughs> How about we? If we? What if we just said harmonious with the Redding vernacular? Like we use the word Redding. Yeah, I don't like that. architectural features specifically. Because, or what if you just take? But um, I'm going to take a blend of the two. Some words <laughs> from the first part, and some words from the second. I promise I won't come back. <laughs> well, we can have. Hold on, an artificial character. And when? And when? Uh, I don't want to use the word relevant, but and when relevant compatible with the existing nearby or existing adjacent. We should be using the same word, right? I think that nearby I think is better in this case okay. than adjacent because you might not have a really nice building in, in it. All right, adjacent. so let's try that. So then it's harmonious, Redding's architectural character and when applicable, shall be compatible with the uh, shall be compatible, right, right, right onto the compatible. Get rid of the masking scale and sufficiently. You can just so, blend it into uh, the next, yeah. And I don't like the word sufficiently. Uh, yeah, I get rid of that. I go right to compatible. Yeah. See how that reads. Okay. You might have to prune the just bottom just end of that sentence, but. Because you already say relationship above, so you don't need to have that in the second. The comma after character. And we're saying complement, compatible. The size, scale, mass, and architectural features of existing. Yeah, but it, it can't be architectural features. It's also, that's too right. much. It's like a big run-on sentence. Right, yeah. it's, it's saying the same thing twice. Well, you start taking some words out. Well, I'm, just trying to get the, okay. I'm trying to get the idea that there's this residential use. Adjacent yes. to it, and that's what we've been trying to address. Yes. Yeah. That's all. I'm just trying to add that residential use language in there. How about harmonious with nearby architectural features? Or I don't like architectural features because it does, that can right, be nearby architectural character. Do you say character anything? is better? All right. For vernacular, but features is you know right. really nearby specific. architectural character. And harmonious means it's complementary. It doesn't have to mimic. It doesn't right. have to be the same. What if we just end it at, at character? Alright, so my proposal is masking and scale shall be complementary to nearby buildings, shall reinforce the compatibility and relationship with structure between structures, and shall be harmonious with nearby with the nearby architectural character. With the nearby architectural character. Yeah. Period. All right, now we're done. 
we're getting rid of just turn track yep. changes off and yeah, just okay. get rid of the other stuff. And then accept. Can we vote? I have a couple of questions. I have a couple of, I'm sorry. The answer I'm is sorry. no, we can't vote. Motion to adjourn, you can't. Let's actually take a motion. Make sure it's safe. So, yeah. So, I'm on section 10.5. 10 10 uh, let's start with 10.5.3. Um, well, no, let's start with 10.5.2, where it says, um, you know, basically, right, you should push the development to this part of the site that isn't near a two, three, a single two or three family use. Uh, how is that going to happen? <laughs> I mean, this is a. This is, in this context, I don't. I don't think it fits for downtown Reading. And tell me if I'm wrong. I think it's, this is just. I'm. I'm. I'm fearful that they start to. You know, you start to read this and like, oh well, now I need to put everything on this side of the my tiny little parcel. So um, to that point, John. I just don't want to put so much in here. In in this to me, we. I can't imagine uh, any development that could do anything with this statement. I thought Rule Street did, did. Yeah, they where did. they had a huge opening in the back and they pushed most of the density towards the front. Well, we already require in here mm -hmm. that they that they do the that they back. do they no well that they keep their building on the street line mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. except for sixty percent of it. And then also do those those setbacks. So we already have that covered. In we already forced them to keep it in the front part of the property. Okay. Um, so I don't know what I don't know what this is doing except sort of um, creating a, a, another uh, restriction when you read through these these guidelines. Well, it doesn't have to be a restriction. I mean, it just says consideration shall be given. And then yeah, I, no, I, 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 I understand. And, you know, and I think Tony is right. I mean, it is, it is suggesting to them that they come up with designs similar to what, to what they did on Gould Street. But we already required them to do what they did on Gould Street. We required them to keep it up at the front, up along the center. Question of, I'm not saying that, that yeah. I understand they're required to keep it up at the front, but what he did was he hollowed out the back, so it's a U-shaped design so that the bulk of the design it has the appearance particularly to those residential people in the back that it's away from them and and that's that's all that the suggestion is and and to your point i would say if you if you do decide to keep yeah. it in I, you may want to just change the ending of it julie where it says um the bulk of the project's density shall be concentrated just say you know um consideration shall be given to you know concentrating along the street front or something so just get the word shall out of there so that gets to john's point yeah. but anyhow they, you're whatever. I mean, Dave's design was. Yeah, really I, I just. I. I guess. I. I think that. All, I. I honestly think everything in this section ten is covered elsewhere in here, except for the shadows. Um, uh, but I don't mind keeping it in here. But I just don't want to keep things in here that are sort of. Um, sort of overly. Mm -hmm. Just. Yeah, no. the depth of Dave's site required him to do that, though. Otherwise, he would have had to either hollow out the section of the center to get windows into those units yeah. or do the horseshoe. So you're saying he would have had to do it anyway. Right. But, you know, it made more sense not to have this sort of, you know, old dumbbell-type buildings, right, you know, right, old yeah. tenement-type buildings with the mm -hmm. airways in the, in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why that works. I think this language can be worked out. I think it's okay to have... I, 
I think it's fine the way it's it is. Consideration shall be given. Like, I'm just yeah, just we consideration say that for giving to location for location. Every other the the shall is a, a, a legal. You know what I'm saying? Like this example. whole thing is like I it's just a reiteration of what we already what oh, we already like saying it. here. Yeah. It just feels very. Um, what if we just get rid of the second sentence? That's what I was suggesting too. Guiding principle. I think it says what we mean, or should we say consideration shall be given for locating the majority of the locating <laughs> for lo yeah right the majority of the proposed density of the project. Um, Project. Away from said residential about it. Away from such uses, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's really very nice language, but it's okay. Sounds like a lawyer wrote it. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Well, they got rid of it. <laughs> the lawyer could do better. <laughs> Well, I was going to say that one of the things, and I can't find the specific language in here, this is the um, Code of Municipal Regulations 4ER, um, talks about when they review our design guidelines that we they, they need to make, be able to determine that we're not unduly restricting development through these design guidelines. So we do need to be careful about that. Um, my, my other question goes to... Uh, uh, 10, 5, 10, uh, 10, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, and 5, 6. We <laughs> mentioned small scale and large multifamily or mixed use projects. Um, I would say that, A, I don't know the difference between the two um, in, in this context. And B, I think that the impacts that we're talking about um, should apply to anything developed under this. Um, so I would recommend that we take to to remove that. Um, um, so, so I think we call multifamily anything bigger than three family, right? Or is it state uh, defines it as four family? Yeah, uh, that we had a definition. Yeah, so we in in our zoning bylaw it's three family or more. The state in 40R it's four family or more. Um, and, but then there's also um, under 40 are small projects which are 12 units or less um, don't have to have an affordability requirement. I don't know if they use that, that exact language calling it a small project, but and I don't know if that's what I, I don't honestly remember what I was thinking of when I wrote this. Is it your language? I don't know if the small scale, large scale is my language. I, it might be. It's not mine. Well, one's a small-scale residential project. The other is a large multifamily or mixed-use project. Right. So there, there is a little bit of a difference here. Right. But I guess I would question that, you know, uh, um, shouldn't we be saying, you know, if a project is proposed adjacent to a single two-family, mm -hmm. then consideration shall be given for how the project can address and engage the existing residential. So just get rid of small-scale I mean, residential. Isn't that what this whole section is about? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a small or big, we would still want them to. Yeah, we don't have time to start trying to figure out how to define these things. Yeah, and I don't think we need to. Nope. But it puts them on notice that we're, we're looking. We take a yeah. look at that. That's important yeah. to them. Yeah. I think we don't need it. I think we can just say if adjacent to, like in every other instance. Yeah. Single family, then consideration will be given for how the project can address and engage the existing. Okay. So work. So while they're doing that, I've one last one in ten four five. Um, the last, um, the the last uh, sentence is additional parking above and beyond requirements in ZBL section ten point five 
may be required for projects proposed in tight downtown areas. Tight. Wait, where are you adding something or did I write that? What, where is that? 10.4.5. Hold on, I just want to get rid of this one first. Yeah. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the thought there was um, because in 10.5 we don't require any commercial uses to parking, and that's potentially becoming a problem. So get rid of the word tight. Well, I, I would say that that doesn't it, that doesn't um, belong in section 10. That actually <laughs> belongs in section 8.2, driveways <laughs> and parking. <laughs> do you agree with the sentiment of it? I do agree with the sentiment. So I feel like that language is something I agree you with the sentiment would too, but is the word tight inappropriate? And I don't word? think that we'll tight downtown tight. areas is either the right the right terminology, but I agree with the sentiment. And it's in the zone, in the district, right? Period. Yes. Yeah, that's what that's I Yeah, two issues with that. One is it it should just be the district, right? Because the district is a tight downtown area. For the most part, yeah. Uh, but then that should apply, that should go back into the park, the whole whole place, because we do want that flexibility for them to, to be able to tell them, <laughs> no, you need more than 1.5, or you need to provide parking for, um, for your retail uses because we already gave away all our free parking. Yeah, I think we should. And that's it. <laughs> Said that's it. Finish it quick. Yes. <laughs> what you were doing, I think. Perfect. 8.28. And then, but then he wanted proposed in the district. I think they're going to have a. I bet you they take issue with that statement. Who? Who's they? State. But I still think we should have it or something like it. I'm just being anal. I got to fix the spacing tomorrow. And then, all right. We can accept all these. Are we good? So one thing that I think um, that our motion to approve these should include is uh, a recommendation not to, to approve them as written, um, but to um, Right, Jonathan brought up the issue about uh, consistency among adjacent um, the terminology of um, adjacent and abutting. Um, yeah, I'll review that tomorrow. And uh, well, and you said we have directly adjacent in here as well. I saw, I saw it once. I, it may have been more often okay. than two. But we were changing adjacent to a budding, I thought. No, we changed the budding, no, to, budding adjacent. to adjacent. Budding to adjacent. Yeah. 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 So we can make a motion then? Anyone else have any comments? Yeah, I think we can. 
to go through tomorrow and accept mm -hmm. nothing like changes yeah. and stuff. CPDC. Revisions to the downtown smart growth district design guidelines as amended. With the amend amended adjacent phrase phrasing. And then also the figures, like other amendments that we're going to make. You're gonna All the amendments we just made. All the yeah. amendments yeah. Okay. and ones we'll make tomorrow. And the administrative through amendments. Through or or yeah. change it to the, uh, I could change the motion to the, uh, move it to CPDC, um, approve the revisions to the downtown smart growth district design guidelines. These are revisions, right? These aren't. Yeah. Yeah. You're correct. Yep. Second. Sorry. All those in favor? Yay. Yay. <laughs> that was close. It only took us I was gonna stay. almost two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't have left. Twice. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, once I had feet. You're forgiven for once. The directly abutting is in uh, the definitions. Um. And it's in the definition of, uh, and actually, it may be appropriate there. I'll double check tomorrow. Because <laughs> you are talking about the, the literal abutting. abutting. Uh, you may have changed the word to abutting in, in, the, in, in that context. context. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming and bearing yes. with us yeah. all day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Absolutely. We, we know this was no easy task. <laughs> yeah. We have an opening on the CBDC. <laughs> I did my uh, I did my time. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be succinct. Nick, if I was. <laughs> you can do your time you again. What else are you gonna do with it? <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna sit here all night, it's like Tony. You're sitting here all night every night. Why as well, well join? Jonathan was on it for quite some time. Yeah. He was there yes. before yes. I came. And then yeah. Sarah ever been? Huh? Yeah. Has Sarah ever been? No. no. Well, I don't think I ever sued her. I right, I think we should just be done unless yeah. you you can do the minutes and zoning. I guess next time, all the next time is really packed already. Um, well, minutes, we had some amendments. The minutes are a nice reminder of what happened yeah. with the zoning discussion. I think it would be good if yeah, we'll keep them. they were yeah. kept together. Um, okay. What do you want me to do? Nothing. Just keep them. Do you have edits? We had it. That's that we talked through all. Well, we could finish the October ones. The November ones are a little more informative with regards to zoning. Okay. So you already have some of the codes from before. And on um, page three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. But I need to change it. Right. On page three. Sorry. Page three. November? Ten. Seven. No, we're not doing November. Okay. We'll okay. do November next time. <laughs> it's okay. It's late. Page three, one, two, three, four, paragraph, first sentence. Mr. Wesson commented that it would not be great if a sports store, I would, I guess I would just change the sporting goods store. And here at the bottom of the page, it says Mr. Safina opined that flower boxes, <laughs> art boxes, did I really say art boxes? That's what we call them. Our boxes is the term. Oh, them. that's right. We're talking about those, those standing devices. Yeah. Oh, God, that's so and that's really all I have besides the ones that we mentioned before. They do go long, I feel like.
Page nine, second full paragraph, in the middle. Miss Hitch asked if the uses that are no across the board should be not. Sorry, where are you? No, that are no, no. that are no. Oh, okay. It should probably be in quotes. Yeah. Right. So the table has it should be across the board of the table, across the table. Table of uses. There are uses that say no in every district. Oh, okay. Got it. It's not written well, but I mean. Maybe it should be capitalized. No, put it in ca caps or something. And then, yeah. yeah. And across the board, mm -hmm. this is sort of like. Across the table, across the column, or the row. No. In all districts or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Vote, but that's what the intent was there. Okay. I was trying to figure out what they was trying to say. <laughs> Eating is good. Eating at midnight is the best. Uh, you wait up. Sorry. Hmm? If you wait it out, you won't have to eat. Just so wait it out. <laughs> Go to sleep. Oh. I won't be able to sleep. I'm too hungry. All right. Motion, motion to approve. Those? <laughs> motion to seven. approve October 10th, October? Yeah. 7th. 7th. 19, 2019. Uh, Meeting minutes. All those in favor? That's amended. Amended. Second and amendment. To adjourn. Second. All those in favor. All right. We're accustomed to having to be the second. Good work. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I'm glad we accomplished something.